Thank you very much, you guys. I did it all exhausted. I put out all the thoughts inside my head. And I crawled under my own. Pounded with both hands until they bled. This is my recollection. Perhaps I got it twisted, I don't know. I'm even more frustrated than before Fear is so misguided Holds me hostage, keeps me moving slow And I try so hard to find it But it keeps on following me everywhere I go my recollection Perhaps I got it twisted I don't know Won't make the same selection I'm even more frustrated than before Hey! Come on now. You know what this is? This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles live. It's alive. Mad, yes, but only a madman could have created this. And we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Chacho's Tacos, and Generation Records. What's going on, everybody? Excited about today's show. Have you seen Once Upon a Time in America? No, I've actually been living in a cave, um, and I've never seen that film. Uh, of course I have, many times. I actually just watched it again recently in its entirety, very patiently. Pretty good film. Uh, what's up, Scott? Yo, I got a package here for you. I got a package, bro. Your package with the book. The book, the second printing is in, by the way. Second printing is in. It's going out. Yes, it's going to be another banger. I guarantee you, we are here. It's going to be a <laughs> shut up from Las Vegas. What's up? Good one. All right. What's up, Jorge? I hope you're feeling better, bro. Hope you're feeling better out there. You know? Come on now. Get your shoes and socks on, kids. Today's going to be a great show. It is Shout Out Sunday here in New York, live from the zombie apocalypse, the never-ending zombie apocalypse. Hey, look, it's like, a, it's like a double-edged sword. On one hand, I'm glad everybody's home and they can watch the show, <laughs> right? Hey, Whitney, what's up? How are you, Whitney? On vacation. All right. You got a man? Is that is that your new man, Whitney? I see him in all your pictures. Is that your dude? Good for you. Good for you. Glad that you found a dude. I hope he's a good dude to you. Um, Laurie Dawn, what's up? Got to shout out Women of the Pit. We had a great event yesterday at Generation Records. A uh, little release uh, signing thing for the book. And Scott Helen from the Outpatients. And uh, Guitar Me of One, he played. Uh, it was great. It was great. Scott Gajewski, I'm shouting you out, Drew, for everything you do for us. Well, I appreciate it. All right, Whitney, good. Good for you. I miss you around here. You're one of the few people that have a really good sense of humor. Mickey Bullets, what's up? That said, let's bring on the hardcore shutterbug. What's up, bro? What's up? What's up? What's up, bro? Let me get let me get your little your icon up there. The hard, there he is. Boom. 
How's What's everybody going doing? On? What happened? You lost your voice? Yeah, my nephew got married yesterday, and uh, I got a very loud family. What, what What do you mean? Your nephew got married? What were you like? Oh, we, we just all scream at each other. Congratulations! Pretty much. That's pretty much it, actually. But was we had a great was time. It a super, was it a super spreader event? Uh, no, no, it was actually very strict, honestly. The uh, yeah, but it was uh, it was really good. It was a lot of fun, and and originally I thought that um, the wedding was today, and it was yesterday. So with that, uh, I figured it was time that we invite another one of our uh, of our many awesome photographer friends to come and jump on the show. Nice intro, and here she is, Miss Michelle Minogue. Boom. What's up? Hello. Hey, how are you guys? Good, good. How are you? I'm hanging in there. I mean, the best that we all can do right now. Yeah. I like House that Queens. background. House Queens. You like that? That's cool. It's Queens. <laughs> yeah, these yeah. are my, my, my cheeky collection. <laughs> I have a problem. Everybody... Ha. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so you you are you are you are our guest today. Yes, for I am. photo of the day, and this is one of your photos. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, on this shout out Sunday photo of the day. Boom! Wrong answers only, please. <laughs> oh boy! Wrong answers only. Yeah, a girl. Yeah, they listen. <laughs> Girls are welcome on this show. You know that. So, oh, come on, wrong answers only. What do we got here? Where's Waldo? Is it a su <laughs> is it is it a super spreader event? <laughs> is it is it is it Jesus on the cross? Is it judge? No. Is it Vince Neal? Is it Michelle? Is it is it Ozzy at CBGB's? <laughs> is it Hallelujah? That is definitely Pavarotti. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 2018 Axel Axel Rose with an E. All right. Axel. Axel. Yep. Is it the baloney boys? All right. You know, I thought, I actually, when I first saw this, I thought it was one of our uh, Bowery Electric shows, but it's not. No, th no this is at um, the Monarch. No, whoa, 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 whoa. That. Whoa, sister. I know you're just getting on the, getting on the horse here, but come on now. You got to play, the, you got to play along a little bit. Is it an overzealous bouncer? Is it Gigi Allen? Is it Elvis? Yo, don't say, yo, how dare you? How, don't don't ever come on the show and say anything bad about Elvis. That's like saying something bad about Dolly Parton. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> Jolene, 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 Jolene. I, I love Dolly Parton and Elvis, you know? All right. Okay. Let's. You, you sent me, there's another one, right? Yes. There is another one, just like the other one. Here is another photo from that same event. And let's talk about what this is. Boom. Okay. Casey says, this hey, Michelle. <laughs> Hi, Casey. <laughs> yeah. Is it a bunch of guys celebrating their col colonoscope? Colonoscopies. <laughs> All right. Uh, is that a cello? Yes, that is. That is right. um, Ian. Tell us what this is. So this is Ian, the punk rock cellist. Uh, he is from New Bedford, Massachusetts area. Um, he plays, he's played with like Sun 41 and like a lot of other bands. Um, he's actually a really, really great guy. Um, he went to Berkeley uh, School of Music. And what he does is uh, he takes his love of punk rock and channel channels it into playing on the cello. And he was brought out by the Wilhelm Scream, uh, which is the band that you see here, um, to cover a couple of songs. What's it, the Wilhelm Scream? A Wilhelm Scream, yes. L Wilhelm Scream? A Wilhelm a, Scream. Like A? A. a okay. Like the, the, like the letter A. <laughs> is it, uh, here's a good one. Here's a winner right here. Is it Cello by Afra? 
<laughs> and we have a, and we have a winner. All right. <laughs> okay. And wh where was this shot? Uh, this was, um, they were on tour with the Comeback Kid at oh, okay. um, the Brooklyn Monarch. Um, and it was just, I had never seen them before. So I was like, okay, let me check them out. They're actually pretty, like a melodic hardcore band. Um, so it kind of goes with that whole Comeback Kid theme. Um, and then this guy came up with a cello and I was like, what the hell is this? Like you see bongos, you see hmm. like African drums, you see violin, violins at metal shows. What a cello? <laughs> I mean, it's just so is, rad. Is it, and what's that? Um, that group that Metallica is it, 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 apocalyptic. Uh, apocalyptica, yeah. Apocalyptic. Are they yeah. all cello players? Yeah, there's four cellists. Yeah, I saw them yeah. once in in uh, on a festival in Europe. It was like pretty interesting. Yeah, it's pretty intense stuff. Yeah, it, it was pretty cool. All right. Yeah, I just thought it, I thought it was rad. I mean, we don't ever get to see this kind of instrument in the hardcore scene very often. Um, I do have a friend of mine who also plays uh, the trumpet, and he's a, a fantastic um, jazz player, but he also does hardcore stuff. So, you know, why not? <laughs> that there should be that, no no reason why not, you know? Yo, exactly. yo, ma. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, th thank you, Michelle. Um, no problem. You know what? Being that, you know what? I'm going to take this opportunity. I think everyone, everyone, I want to announce a show that's coming up. And uh, I think this is pretty cool. And here you go. On Sunday, February 13th, my homegirl is coming on the show. Miss Doro Pesh will yeah. be coming on the show. So we're going to get our medal on with Doro. Uh, yes. she, she's super cool. And uh, so got some gals coming on the show. Keep it, keep it moving and grooving. So keep an eye out for February 13th. Doro will be on the show. So that said, um, Thank you again, Michelle, and you're welcome yes. back anytime. You know. Thank you for having me, guys, and thank you, Steve, for giving me this opportunity. And you know what? You, yeah, and also, you know what? Being that you, your significant other, I'm going to use this opportunity to shout out. Uh, four weeks from today, your husband Lenny, of course, the guitar player, one of the guitar players in Fahrenheit 451. Four weeks from today, Sunday, January 16th, right here at the heart of the zombie apocalypse at the Bowery Electric, Fahrenheit 451, 24-7 spies, Cropsy and Iconicide, all ages, free. You it's going to be a rad show. Yeah, it's gonna be it a is. a heck of a show. Yep, yep. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I just, hope things calm, I just hope things calm down around here before then, you know? Fingers crossed. <laughs> yep. All right, Michelle, we'll see you soon. All right, thank you guys. Yeah. All right, bro. Awesome. Awesome. Today's gonna be a good one. I gotta say. Shout out to Michelle for photos of the day. Yes, yeah. definitely. Right. We got yeah, a lot of great photographer friends, and we'll get them all on here one by one. You know. That, that's the spirit. And uh, got to keep our got to keep the flag flying for all the people that are, you know, documenting everything. Doro is gorgeous, and Spaghetti Lee says she's adorable. All right. Adorable. Adorable. I All think right. it's going to be awesome. I mean, I it's uh when yeah. you when you when you uh told me we were getting her, that was that was like a total left field, you know? I mean, bro, is it, yo, you want another left field? You, do hold it. Hold on. You want another left field? Hold on. Bring it. Well, this one's not Oh yeah. All right. You know what? Since we're on this photographer thing, real yeah. quick. Oh yeah. Come on now. This isn't that left field, but on Wednesday, February 9th. Come on now. Psh, are you legend? Can you say Ed Culver's coming oh, on the show? Yeah. Come on now, all you photographers. Man, what you know about Ed Culver? That's, Black that's... flag damage. TS you know, this guy, serious delirious right here, man. He's serious. he is one of the one of the very, very top for me. Yep. You know? So, yeah, he's, he's, he's legend. All right, man. I'll talk to you in a bit. See ya. All right. Here we go. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, and we are sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Generation Records, and located in Corpus Christi, Texas, 
Chacho's Tacos opened the doors in 2001, home of the almighty Chacho's Taco. They cook up an incredible homestyle Tex-Mex food, and this month they're celebrating the 20th anniversary. They've been supporting underground music since the beginning in their own words. We ain't stopping anytime soon. Touring bands that play Corpus Christi swung by and get a home-cooked meal at Chacho's Tacos. We got you. The underground scene will never die. Please follow us on Facebook or on Instagram. Also, while we're at it, before we bring our guest on, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, located in Lakewood, Colorado, is the Rocky Mountain headquarters for all things punk, hardcore, and, believe it or not, incredibly, metal. Established in 2014, they have the largest selection of CDs, shirts, stickers, patches, and accessories between Chicago and Los Angeles. Goddamn electric. From the pit to the ditch, they got your back. Get in touch with them at www.chainreactionrecords.com. That said, let's do it to it. Everybody behaving themselves. Yes, yeah, Sid's still in England. Sid's going to come on in a little while. Uh, yep, Ed Culver's going to be great. Very. We're going to talk to him about Black Flag Damage, shooting that, and, and everything. Yo, Bob Riley's checking in. Okay, we can, we can move forward now bring our guest on. Good to know you're here, Riley. Up in Troy, New York, we have met the enemy, and the enemy is us. What's up, Sawdust Sally? Hope you're well. All right, let's clear the deck. What the heck? Let's do it. Here we, here we go. All right. Today's guest is an American singer, songwriter, and illustrator hailing from Reno, Nevada. He's known for his work with the bands Go National, Drop Acid, Mustard, Five Foot Eleven Inches, Ghetto Moments, Positively Ventilate, Unsteady Heights, Gimme an F, and of course, since 1979, over 15 albums and numerous world tours, the incredibly influential Seven Seconds. Please welcome, coming at us from lovely Sacramento, California, Mr. Kevin Seconds. Bro. <laughs> hey, I can't hear you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I muted myself because I was thinking, what if I, like, somehow yeah. you can still hear me even though nobody else and I'm, like, burping and shit. I just, I thought, yeah, no, you're like, just like, yeah. You never know. Yeah. Uh, I'm is that 60. Your Hey, I'm Drew. Pleased <laughs> to meet you. Is that your green screen? Is that your green screen behind? Yes. You? Yeah. Yeah. I'm high tech now, man. I'm. I'm. I'm just producing it now. Yeah. It's a. Uh, I. I, you... I. I. I discovered the magic of green screen at, at, a, at a you know a year ago, and now I'm like, all right, man, I'm gonna do some cool shit. And, yeah, I, I haven't done anything yet. You know what? I, thanks for the heads up because I don't think I, I don't even think I'm gonna fuck with it. You know. It's it's fun. We do, you know, when COVID started, we started doing a, a lot of live streaming, like my wife and I and some friends of ours. And and uh, I, it was great because it, it kept us busy musically and stuff. And I thought, you know, I got sick of seeing just my little art studio behind me. So I, I started putting weird videos behind me and, it, you know, and it got way out of hand to the point where you couldn't <laughs> even see me. You just saw this weird right, flashing shit. Right, you know? right, right. So what um what's the latest? I mean, what's been going on since the zombie apocalypse hit what, what's it been looking like for you and, 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 uh, and how you getting on with it? Um, you know, relatively. Okay. I thank goodness. Uh, my, me and my family, we haven't, I've had people in my family who've gotten sick, but we've managed to avoid it. Um, I, it's not easy. It's not hard for me to sort of isolate anyway and just do my own thing and stay away from yeah. people. So it, it wasn't that huge of a, a, a drastic of a change. I was a little worried, like, what if I feel like going to, a, you know, out and I can't now, you know? Um, I mean, I haven't played shows, which is weird, you know, because I even. Nothing. Even, yeah. I mean, I this year I played an arch. I did an art show in Oakland, mm -hmm. punk rock and paintbrushes. And my wife and I played a little coffee coffee house here in Sacramento. And that's it, which is bizarre to me. But <laughs> have, have you done you've been doing like some of the like streaming stuff locally, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 a lot of streaming and just um, the good thing is I I wrote more songs this past year than I've written ever in in all combined. Yeah. Not that you know it'll ever see the light of day, but I I did more artwork and I I think I it was nice to get to kind of focus on other things because every year I'd always think that I should go out you know with my guitar and 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 tour and it's fun, but it started to get a little uh just too much, you know. Don't it's easier you when you're. Don't you have this? I mean, I know we're, we're skipping around, but 
Don't you have this on on the board? What's that? That's not, the circle jerks thing. I'm not familiar. Yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. that's coming. That's coming up in. Uh, <laughs> that's coming up. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> I heard. I heard nothing about this. Maybe, really? Maybe it's the guys singer. got together with a new singer and. Um, God, yeah, no. my own brother betrayed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that kind of came out of nowhere, really. Uh, we were pretty much, uh, you know, we we're like, all right, you know, we got members that are that are. I Troy, our drummer, has just been battling with a lot of nerve damage and crazy you know, various things that he's done to his body over the years, and um, we just had stuff, you know, health health stuff mostly that just kind of staring us in the face, and we just said uh maybe maybe that's a sign you know <laughs> maybe yeah. it's time to um none of us wanted to everybody was still you know the last couple of tours we'd done and, and what was that? that that was like two three years ago right 17 uh 2007 yeah that was uh three, three years three yeah. yeah i think 17 i don't know right. you know yeah so but leading up to that we were still touring and playing and the shows were great and we were having a, a great time and it, sure. it, it just it didn't feel natural to just stop it but life kind of sort of forced our hand at it you know and so we did and and you know we all remained in contact and and talked about it a lot and i've i've, I've been writing songs kind of teasing them like hey well what if we just rec you know released a song just for fun and everybody's yeah. like yeah you know if we what's the point if we don't get the tour so yeah it was kind of off and then um the circle jerks uh people came to us and asked us if we wanted to do a show or two and i said you know we'd love to but we're just not in a position to do it and um there was just we kept talking and everybody in the band kept talking and and we just started we got to a point where um it, we felt like it, 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 this might be the only chance we get to kind of kind of go out and do it in the way that we would have done it if we knew we were going to break up and we could yeah. just go out and do it in more of a celebratory way and and thank everybody and because you know fucking 40 years of of just having so much love and support and, 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 and yeah. great experiences and stuff. And, and to have it sort of end in a little, like a whimper, <laughs> you know, it's just yeah. like we give up, you know, and it, it just didn't feel right, you know? So um, we all talked for weeks and then we just said, can we do it? Can we pull it off? Is everybody ready? And um, yeah, uh, Troy, Troy, uh, I, I, I'm not supposed to talk about it too much because leading up to it, we've all there was there was always hope that Troy could maybe pull it off, but it's not looking like Troy's going to be able to do it. Right. So now we're we're kind of like, all right, so now do we want to, you know? So yeah, but other than that, everybody, Bobby and Steve and I are 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 it, you know, Troy wants us to do it. Everybody wants to do it. So in one way or another, we're going to do it. <laughs> it's like, you know, guys, we're committed. You know, <laughs> yeah yeah well you're you're in now right you're, you're yeah. in deep and and yeah you know it's a, it's a shame he can't do it but you know there's a lot of pros out there that that could that'll sit in and 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 yeah and and, and, and you guys are you guys have a lot of uh, people that love you and and someone will sit in who just loves the material and knows the material right yeah that's that's the and and we don't want it to just be just a hired gun we want it to be somebody yeah. that we know and love and we get along sure. and, and we also want troy's blessing on it like i told troy i said look if we if we start thinking about it, I want you to sign off on it. You know, I want you involved. I, I I'm hoping that he'll at least come out on, on part of the tour, you know, and sure. be with us. But, sure. um, everybody's got to be on board in order for this to work. Um, or it just won't work. Cause I know us yeah. and, and it's always been a very personalized kind of family deal. And it's gotta be somebody that really understands and, and we have a, a connection and whatnot. So. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. So, so that said, let, let's, uh, how did you come up? Did you grow up in a musical household? How how did music come into your life? Um, as a as a young kid, my I grew up listening to my dad's country western music. He loved all the old, you know, uh, Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson and Marle, uh, Merle, you know, Merle Hager and those guys. I hated now, now, that and, shit. And, 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 and was this was this in Reno? No, no. I grew up in I did grow up in Sacramento. I was born and raised in Sacramento. My okay. family moved to Reno when uh, my my mom and dad had divorced. My mm -hmm. mom picked us up, the three of us kids, mm -hmm. and we went up to Reno we, we, it, because back in the, the late seventies, everyone could get work, and it, wow. Reno was kind of still happening. You know, it was like sure. a, it, it was a big gaming oh, place, yeah. and every mm -hmm. it was still. So you know, it was like we were looking for a change, and, and we had friends that uh, said, "Come up, you can get jobs and, and get a house. It's cheap." And so we went up there, and of course, lived out of a car for about two weeks until my mom and I got jobs at McDonald's, and <laughs> it was it was a rough go. The first three years was really 
really tough, man. It was like a, I was 16 and, and I, I wanted to work because I just, I wanted, I liked the independence of it, but I, I was sort of forced into that role because I was the, you know, the little man of the family. <laughs> are are and, you, uh, how many brothers and sisters do you have? Uh, one brother, younger brother, and one yeah. younger sister. Right. So you're the oldest. Yeah. Is your, is your brother, um, is your sister the youngest? No. So uh, Steve, okay. my brother, the yeah. bass player for seven seconds is the youngest. Yeah. And uh, my sister is in between us. So we're about two years apart, each of us. And uh, yeah, I have, yeah. I have the same setup. I have a younger brother and a younger sister. Uh, yeah. She, so, my but, sister lives out in New York actually in is upstate New York and is, you know, right, she's, right she's doing great. Cool. So, um, was that was that the Bakersfield sound? No. <laughs> Before there was a Bakersfield sound, yeah. my dad was into that. And and again, yeah. I I really hated that stuff. I thought it was yeah. just old redneck music, and I couldn't stand it. Now, of course, I have an appreciation we love it. for it. We love right. that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did that with my mom. You know, so my meanwhile, my mom was like. Uh, you know, Beatles, Motown, sure. uh, jazz records. My mom was an insane record collector and had just everything. Listen to everything. Listen to weird, you know, opera stuff. She would listen to like, you know, poetry set to music. She was really into, you know, Jimi Hendrix. Mm -hmm. So my mom was the rock and roll pop person. And I grew up listening to her. She'd buy seven singles, you know, hit songs and, and come home and play them. And, and um, I, you know, it was, it, I rebelled instantly. Uh, against my dad because not only was he was also a cop which was really funny so oh, wow. my dad was the sort of boring conservative you know country western guy and my mom was like the hip you know berkeley educated you know uh, you know hippie mom so i gravitated toward her at an early age because she was like way hipper and more interesting to hang out with and and and, and learn from and stuff so how they got together, uh, you know, who knows? But <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's interesting because we're we're both the same age and grew up like I said, very similar. You know, my parents were divorced, and I have, mm -hmm. I have a brother and sister. And um, Nick, Nikki says country and folk is a great way to learn how to write songs. And, I agree. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, and growing up, like I loathed that stuff. You know, yeah. like but you know things sort of you kind of circle back, and you're just like, wow. You know, yeah. that, I love that. I love that stuff now. And, 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 you know, and I have it in my notes and, and, and I know we're going to go there, but I, I'm going to hint at it now. And that's sort of like Americana and what people's sort of concept of Amer of what Americana is. And like, to me, like agnostic front is Americana at this point, you know, it, it's all, it, it's as much Americana as Woody Guthrie, you know, it's yeah. part of the, it's part of the fabric Absolutely. Of, of this country. And I don't feel, I, I didn't always feel that way, but I, I certainly feel that way now is that, mm -hmm. you, you know, uh, there's the, 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 I don't say the, 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 the borders are blurred, but it's all part of Americana. I agree. You know? yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I, I had to come around to things too. Cause when I got, when I discovered, when I got into punk rock, mm -hmm. I was like a, mostly a hard rock kid, you know, black yeah. Sabbath, deep purple, whatever. Of course. Um, Led Zeppelin. And, and I, I just I I had a hard time looking at my record collection and looking at 999 and with pistols and sham 69 and then looking over at my leads. I had to get rid of those records, yeah. which, of course, later on, I regretted because I'm yeah. like, I love that. But, I, you know, the funny thing is, is, that, is as much as I didn't like old country Western music, I always loved Johnny Cash, which is funny. I always gave I mean, you know, isn't it funny? Uh, Johnny yeah, Cash yeah. Always gets a pass. He, he, he gets a pass always, you know, and and yeah. uh, and I always loved Bob Dylan. And there was something it was because he was such a weirdo and he had such a, you know, terrible voice. And I just thought, yeah. how is this guy popular? But I was intrigued by him, you know, like, and I always love Woody Guthrie. Woody Guthrie always Woody got Guthrie. Yeah. You, you know, he yeah. was the original punk rock. Absolutely. Dude. Oh, yeah. like he, Hard. hardcore yeah truly yeah. truly yeah. like going out and just doing it yeah, like more right. than i'd ever do any of that you know, it's like... <laughs> so, so what how did how did you um uh pick up an instrument and at what point did sort of you and your brother get rolling with this um I, I always had a fascination for the guitar i didn't understand hmm. what it how do you play it or what I didn't understand the chords, but I would see watch like somebody on TV and I was always really, really blown away by the, and especially the electric guitars, you know, how yeah. when, when you started hearing the distortion, uh, we had a neighbor friend that had an acoustic guitar and he, he would bring it over and play 
and I would watch him and try to figure out what how he what he was doing on chords. And he actually showed me the E chord. That was a, I think the first chord I ever learned. And I was I was like, oh my god, you know. So he actually let me borrow that guitar, and I did. I had no idea what I was doing, and I, you know, I I dropped it a few times, and you know, but I was, you know, I always had, was interested in, and in at school, like in in high school, I was in I was in like the choir in junior high and high school, because somebody mistakenly said, hey, you know, you got a decent voice, and I'm like, oh, cool, I'll be in the choir, but I always wanted to take an, up an instrument. In my high school, it was always always about uh, horns and it was brass and and strings and but there was no guitar. Nobody you know taught you how to play guitar in high school. So, yeah. Um, eventually, I just I think I just borrowed a guitar and then I actually stole a guitar at at a at a music store. I walked in and I I I had a friend of mine that was like uh di, you know being we were we were also we at by the time we got into our like my early teens i became a terrible thief like i don't know if i've ever ever oh, even you, talked about this but oh, yeah you, you you too yeah you, yeah you, i oh, like oh, really <laughs> i mean yeah right what you, know, you know but... i think it was part of our our our, our, our the, the subculture teenage subculture in the 70s it Probably. was just same thing here we were just we had like a pack of a pack of my juvenile delinquent friends were cut out from school yeah. and wander into the the village here and yeah. we would just have we would cover for each other and it was it's like crazy. All, yeah, we had yeah. we had these big bulky coats and we'd cut the slot yeah, with these right. slits on the side. <laughs> I go in and steal like I'd steal like back then they'd have eight track tapes that were in these long cases. Do you remember that? Yeah, and sure, you'd sure. you'd have to take the whole case out and, and, until you got home and take it out of the case. And I would steal like two. You know, like <laughs> you know, deep purple machine yeah. head or whatever right, the hell I was stealing. Right, right. But we were really into stealing shit. And I always had it in my mind that I I I wanted to quit stealing, you know, stealing because I knew it was bad and all this other shit. But I said I'm I'm gonna steal a guitar if it's the last thing I do. And I finally I did it. And uh it was just some kind of a fender. It might have been even a telecaster, which is did, funny. Did you manage to get that in the coat? <laughs> no, I just walked out. I I Somebody had said, if you're going to do it, you got to do it like you, you own the, like walk out like it's just yours, you know? Right, and so right, I kind right. of, you know, I kind of, uh, I had also read an interview too, where like Pete Townsend or somebody did that. Like they, when they were a kid, they went in and, and so I thought, well, if they can do it, I it's somebody like Pete Townsend. I don't know if it was Pete yeah, Townsend, but, yeah. but yeah, so I walked in and my friends were asking questions like, what do you know, what, 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 what is your pick selection like? And I was over there in the corner and I just walked right out and it was beautiful. It, it, nobody, uh, Nobody was wiser, and I, I took it home, and I had to hide it from my mom and my family, and it was crazy. But was was Seven Seconds <clears throat> the, the first band that you formed? Uh, so Steve, so when I first started, uh, it's probably about seven. It, right after we got into punk rock, which was sort of the tail end of '77, we started hearing the records and and getting into the idea of it. It, wanting to be punk rockers, whatever that meant. And, and, and so, what and what was punk rock? The Ramones, the Sex. What yeah. was out? What was for for a kid like you growing up in that part of the country? What what sort of filtered through to you? It wasn't the music at first because we didn't yeah. have access. The records were not in the record stores. That's what um, I was figuring, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I, I've told the story a few times. Uh, there was a special on TV. Uh, like a, a weekend, like NBC or something had a weekend special uh -huh. and it was the punk explosion in England. And they had mm. all this crazy footage of it was the pistols were on stage, but it was back when they had all, you can still see it on YouTube, but the kids were choking each other in the dance sure, floor sure. and, and spitting up at the, at, at the pistols yeah, yeah. and the pistols were spitting back. I, I, I know, I, I know the footage. I know the footage you're talking of course. about. Like, it's classic. It's that, yeah. That. Yeah. It's burned <laughs> into your, if, if yeah, you're yeah, a right. punk rocker. It's yeah. iconic. Yeah. Yeah. And, the, you know, we were watching it with a friend of our family. A few people were watching it, and they, everybody was like, oh, my God, that's fucking repulsive. It's so gross. And meanwhile, I'm going, holy shit, this is fucking great. Like, what? Why? What? what's going on here? I got to know more right. about it. So there was something about it that just didn't appeal to me. I think just being a fucking – we were living at the time out of this motel that we lived in for about two years called the Western Motel in Sparks, Nevada. And it was just – Life really was pretty. I was sixteen, I or seventeen. I, I had no hope really. I was working at a McDonald's. I was like trying to be, uh, just trying to figure out what what was happening <laughs> and what my future was going to look like. And uh, that just seemed that brought hope to me for some weird reason. I still can't explain it. Um, and because my little brother Steve kind of he just tagged along and did whatever I did. He kind of followed suit. He got into it. 
our sister got into it. And next thing I know, you know, we're buying uh, Never Mind the Bullocks and the first Ramones album and um, X Respects, O oh Bondage Up Your Seven Inch, and you know that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And that was it, man. We were hooked. <laughs> it was just yep. all over. I think. Hold on. I think you might have froze up a little bit. Hold on. Uh-oh. Yeah, you froze. You froze up a little bit. I hear you, but you froze okay. a little bit. Okay. Um, no, no. Yeah, let's do this. Sign off and sign back on. I'll do a you got quick. It. I'll do a quick uh, sponsor break. You got it. You got it. Okay. Yeah, let's take advantage of this opportunity. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. We're sponsored by Generation Records since 1992. Has been a mainstay of the New York metropolitan area music scene. Today, they offer a diverse selection of new and used rock, jazz, indie, hip-hop, punk, hardcore, metal, blues soundtrack, and reggae LPs, as well as T-shirts, posters, and other merchandise. They buy used record collections and music memorabilia and will pay you top dollar for them. House calls made for the large collections in the tri-state area. Call or email generationrecords at gmail.com and follow them on Facebook or on Instagram. We're here today with our guest, Mr. Kevin Seconds, and he's back. Yeah, any problem like that, just so- – oh, come on now. <laughs> I have been sitting here. I'm like, what? what, what oh, yeah. Hold that up again. <laughs> I just realized I was a – Yeah. Decent. You know, that was the first hardcore show I ever went to. No kidding, really. 19, 1981. There was 15 kids in the audience. Was that at E7? No, no. Um, I, I grew up in New York City, but I went um, – as a teenager, I went up to Emerson College in Boston to study oh, acting. Oh, okay. As okay. soon as I got there, I met a kid in the uh, cafeteria who had his head shaved. And right. I said, what are you into? And we started talking. That kid turned out to be Jack Kelly, the singer for Slapshot. All right. <laughs> he, was, he was going to Emerson as well. He said, look, why don't you just come with me to the show? We went to the show. It was in this art space. There was like 20 kids there. Uh, it was 1981. Oh, it was awesome. SSD Control's third show. You know? That's awesome, man. That's yeah. awesome. I'm- yeah. Am I, I am I frozen again, Drew? It seems that way, but you're kind of clicking clicking in and out. So let, let's let's huh. you come you come back to it. So let, okay. let's go with it. Let's go with it for a while and see if it if it okay. if it if it writes itself. It seems like you kind of you kind of come uh, come in and out. So yeah. so how does the band get formed? Um, so Steve and I tried to. Yeah, I I, I kind of showed steve a few things on the on the root notes the low notes of a guitar like the mm-hmm. bass parts because i was trying to groom him to be the bass player right. and um he was into it you know just a little 13 14 year old 12 wow. year olds you know kid um and then we were we were we were really like besides we also we, we loved all the like uh pistols and remotes but we also really loved like still love new york dolls and and that glam stuff that we were we, we i i like the two kind of equally so i was hoping we could kind of come up with this like hard hard sounding punk rock but with like just just dumb lyrics really and we we started we tried to have but, but, we, and what year is this 79 that would have been seven that would have been 78 we we started a band and we thought we were really original wow. we called it the misfits and we thought all right we got our name the misfits <laughs> And then, of course, we're the I, ori- no, we're the original misfits. <laughs> exactly, and we tried to sue Danzig, and it just didn't work out. No, right. uh, so we, I, I, we were, we were psyched. We had my, a buddy I worked with. I worked at a Montgomery Ward, which, if any, nobody remembers, was like a, a department store kind of thing, uh-huh. and uh-huh. at least in the West Coast, I don't know if it was like out east, but uh, I worked in the garden department, and my my best friend worked in the hardware department, and he loved like Paul McCartney and wings. And I was trying to get him into punk rock, but he just, there was, he just wasn't digging it, but I wanted, I wanted to try to find a drummer and I, I, I begged him to, to learn how to play drums and he tried and he just couldn't do it. Anyway, um, it, we realized there was another misfit. So we changed, we changed the name a million times. And then we finally started to get, I was really starting to get into writing and I was really caught up with, because you got to remember at the time and, you know, right per 80, we were still kind of being told that the Russians were going to bomb us at any time and that, you know, and Reagan. The, and of course, Reagan was in office. And Reagan was in bit. office. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and, you know, uh, if you, you know, you turned 18, you were required to go register for the draft. And it now, was like, were you, were you in hmm. Reno at this point? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. We moved in, yeah. we moved to Reno in 70, about uh, 77. Okay, basically. Got it. Yeah. And um, it, everything just seemed kind of like, uh, like I said, it, it didn't seem like things were going too well in the world in general. You know, you had the uh, Iran 
stuff going on and everything was, you know, so, um, but I became really politicized. Like I was, I was, I was obsessively reading the paper and getting like, I, I was all fear and anger and just frustration and not knowing what to do. And it wasn't like, I got to go defend my country. It was more like, you know, what, like, what is a young person like me going to, what chance do I got? You know, what am I going to do? So music just seemed to be the, the answer, like all the time, you know, just play music, write songs right from the heart. And uh, of course the stuff was just cheesy and over, you know, really simplified, uh, you know, ridiculous versions of, you know, my, my idea, but, but um, yeah. And then a, a, a toward a, throughout 79, we, <clears throat> we kind of found our sound. We found a drummer that could play fast and we uh, call ourselves X band X B A N N E D. And I came up with all these crazy graphics. It was all clash looking stuff, you know, like Nothing basically wrong with that. Right, right. But you know, we drew on our clothes and, you know, yeah, all this yeah, other yeah, stuff. Yeah, sure. and, uh, but we still didn't really know if there were any punk rockers in Reno. We didn't know if there were other kids like us. Right. We, so <laughs> we would go, I mean, you know, don't, you know, and if you're living in New York or LA or San Francisco, you have a pretty good idea because everybody's there, every, everything and everybody's there in a city like Reno, especially in fucking, you know, 1979, 80, uh, it is like, I would think you're taking your life into your own. You're taking your life into your hands. Absolutely, absolutely. Like yeah. it's just, it's just, it's a stupid, uh, it's a stupid route to take, basically. And so we were. <laughs> The only safe haven was on Friday nights at midnight. They had the Rocky Horror Picture Show showing at this theater. Sure. And we'd go there just to kind of, it was. The Maybe there's thing. some freaks hanging out. And absolutely. And that's exactly what it was. The The yeah. initial sort of idea of a punk scene in Reno really all came out of the sort of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Like it was there Makes that sense. we realized that there were kids that loved the Ramones like us and loved, the, you know, Iggy pop and whatever. Yeah. And so we just started to kind of hang out. And then at the end of December, in December 78, the Ramones actually came through and played Reno. They were opening for remember Eddie money, two tickets to paradise, you know, come on. Do I remember Eddie money, right. He's a New York city cop? <laughs> come on. Eddie money. Right. So take me home tonight. Oh yeah. yeah. So yeah. You're, hey, you're yo, Eddie me. money grew up in the, in the story of projects. Did he? So he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a, you know, a local hometown hero. Eddie okay, Money. We, gotcha. we cut him a lot of slack. He grew up in the projects in Astoria. Is that right? Astoria Lou, Astoria Lou would know. Is, is it the Astoria projects? Which projects in, in Queens? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So he was like, you know, he had had the big hit and uh, I'd heard on the radio, it said with special guests of Ramones. And I thought it was a joke. I was like, there's no way the Ramones are playing with Eddie Money. He's like the biggest thing in pop right now. So I called the record stores and they said, yeah, we, you know, the Ramones are playing. Who cares? And I'm like, are you fighting? Yeah. So we got our tickets, um, went to the show. The first, uh, literally the first 20 kids that were in the line were, it were all Ramones fans, including us. We, we fought to get to the front of the line. And while in the two hours we spent hanging outside, waiting to get in, we all started talking and it was like kids, other kids from Reno, other kids from like like Tahoe, Carson City, other parts sure. of Nevada, sure. and we were all realizing that we all love this shit, and and so we said we have to after this we have to keep we have to do shit, you know what I mean? Like we have to keep things going, and that was really where it, where it all started. The sort of underground scene in Reno was like all after that Ramones show. All of a sudden, a couple other bands started popping up. Um, Seven Seconds had started. We hadn't really quite found a name yet. We were like. Um, uh, kind of messing around with different names, but then we met the guy that ended up bec becoming our first drummer, Tom, at a record store, and sure. um, we, we, I don't know, somehow we came now, up now, with seven well, wasn't, the, wasn't the band initially two sets of brothers? Yes, yeah. Tom, yeah. the drummer, had a brother, Jimmy, who was the singer, who is Dim Menace, the guy that's on the cover of Skin, yes. Brains, and Guts. He, yep. I didn't want to sing. I just wanted to be initially i wanted to be the guitar player i didn't want to uh sing and and so i was trying to i wanted us to have a i knew i wasn't like a tough guy snarly singer and so i wanted to have find somebody that could be more punky <laughs> and so his brother who'd never had sung in a band before was like uh i'll, I'll try out and he was just like Rawr! you know big burly. <laughs> he would fight five guys and i'm like all right he's tough you know he can be in the band you know so uh, that didn't last too long. He 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 was in only in the band for a few months, and I I, I was writing the song, so I said, "Fuck it, I guess I'll sing and play guitar." But yeah, that's now, how that's now on on that's him on the cover, yep. correct? Yeah, yeah. And he sang on some of this stuff on, on this recording. Uh, he he did backing vocals. Yeah, uh, okay. yeah. 
and and he also after uh he and his brother tom our drummer uh, started a band called section eight which had they, right. you know they didn't release much but they were on the maxim rock and roll compilation um not not so quite on the western front and right. they had this song called fat drunk and stupid which is great and they were really a great band they just they didn't they recorded some stuff but they never really released anything and so you know there, which is a, 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 the story of a lot of these great underground reno bands that just sure. never got around to recording anything well, well we, we've anything. talked about it we, excuse me we've talked about it before is in that era it mm. wasn't that easy to actually get the stuff out right. i mean unless unless you had sort of like a a, a patron or someone or your, your or your, your one of your parents was going to lend you like yeah. like printing up a record was extremely like it was difficult you know well, it, the thing was, is that, yeah, exactly. And so what we released our first records were cassettes, right. you know? Yeah, right, <laughs> we just, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, exactly. and th now over here on the East Coast, this was the first thing that filtered over here. Like this right. is the first time I heard Seven Seconds was, was this. And, uh, and, and, the, and the, um, the compilation, Not So Quiet on the Western Front, you had a song on there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Was that before this or, or during after it was like about the same time it recorded the same session and session. Then, okay. Yeah. 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 Um, that was, we had initially, um, we were trying to figure out a way to release our own record. Yeah. And, and, you know, back then vinyl wasn't that expensive. It was just yeah. learning how to, what you needed to do and getting the masters and all that stuff. We had no idea. We didn't even know what we were doing. And that wasn't even a real studio. That was our friend's house. He had a four track reel to reel in his, in his daughter and his, uh, he used his daughter's bedroom to do all the vocal parts. So all those stuff wow. that's on those records, the first art, first two EPs are all done in, in our, in the engineer's little girl's bedroom. <laughs> it's like, well, it's part of the charm, right? Yeah. It was crazy to think like uh, that, but you know, yeah. yeah. Were you, were you guys happy with, with, uh, with that first seven inch? Well, we were happy that, that I, Jello Biafra took an in, he took an early liking to us. We played, we started to play. Uh, we were really fortunate because when we first started to play, um, we we brought DOA up to play Reno. We just sure. we wrote him a letter, I think, and said we want you to play <laughs> Reno. And they said, okay, cool. How much can you pay us? And we like, can we pay a hundred? Okay, you know, it was that simple, really. When, yeah, yeah, when, yeah. We, when we come back down to San Francisco, we'll 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 whip over to Reno and play. They they wanted to go because you could drink for free at the casinos and 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 gamble all night, but. <laughs> But there was really a nice, a really great little scene that was starting to build up there. And and we and so we started to send out letters and make phone calls to DOA. And if you talk to the guys in DOA, they could put you in touch with yeah. people from whatever. I think they put us in touch with Black Flag. Yeah. Um, Jello to be offering the Dead Kennedy guys were always super supportive. And and Jello like wrote us this letter saying, like, you know, would you have any interest in in putting out your record in our alternative tentacles? And we were like, Are you sure. fucking kidding me? You know, that's like a Yes, you know, because um, at that at that time they they were sort of at the they were at the forefront, you know. They right. they, they were we oof. and uh, yeah. you know I want to take this opportunity because you you just you said that the uh, the, uh, the 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 magic word for the day, and I want to bring our friend on uh, a friend of yours, a friend of mine who's over in the UK right now. Yo, Sid. Sid. Yo. Sid, what's up? <laughs> there he is. No. What are you, were, you sleeping, Sid? were you sleeping, Sid? No. What time is it over there? It's exactly 8.49 p.m. Mm. And and just real quick, Sid, I want to go deep into this, but who, who have you seen play over there? Uh, seen the Cocky Rejects, seen no. the Exploited, seen Discharge. Um, how's Waddy so doing? Yeah, what? Yeah, why? Why not? After two years, how, no, how's no, Waddy doing? How, how's how's Waddy, Waddy doing? doing? Oh, w Waddy's doing great, honestly. He, you know, he actually, hopefully, yeah, he's taking care of himself. Good, good, uh, good, good. Long story short, and that was the last show I saw. And you saw year. JJ with Discharge, yeah, yep, that's our dude. We like nice. JJ, yeah, they play with great, a band. Man. I can't think of the name. They're we toured with some band I can't think of off the top of my head, which were definitely a different band, but they were they were different. They were good, but discharge is discharge. Like they played basically every song you wanted to hear with two thirds yep. of the right. up. Let's do let's do album of the week, Sid. Awesome. All right, all right. You did your homework. This is how how you pull up your notes, Drew. I have to pull up mine. Where's one your one. banner? You didn't put up your banner. Oh wait wait wait. 
So this is gonna be so impromptu that I have to do this. <laughs> hey, look, if rap bones can do it. So let me get this straight. You carried this banner with you to 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 the UK? Yeah, actually I did. I actually did. Did you do any DJ gigs over there? Well, why do you think I have this, Drew? Ah, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah, Drew. Come on. Hey, listen. Yeah, you know, Drew. <laughs> you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. What can I tell you? You know? All right. You ready? Um, yep. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, album of the week. Here we go. Boom. Boom, motherfucker. All right, Sid. Go ahead. Well, we're going to keep this one short and sweet, everybody, since this is going to be a you know, an amazing show. Well, honestly, you see here, this is Black Flag's Jealous Again, which was Black Flag's second EP that was released, uh, I believe, in August of 1980. Which, uh, but prior to that, it was recorded at Media Art Studio in Hermosa Beach, California. Uh, I believe between November 1979 up until April 1980. And this is put out by uh, SST, which was Greg Ginn's label. Obviously, a lot of you know that. And, you know, th this record itself is not really, I can honestly say too much about it, honestly. But what's funny is um, this was actually, if I'm not mistaken, through my notes, sorry, uh, through my notes, um, this was actually supposed to be a 12-inch. And also because this was also uh, Chavo, a.k.a. Ron Reyes's uh, first album or first appearance with the band, even though it was very, very short-lived. It was kind of the what-ifs, like what if, he stayed being the singer, you know, well, well, it's like, you know, even like with Keith Morris, what would the band be like if Keith Morris was still doing Black Flag and that kind of thing, even though it's, it's four songs, it's four songs that hit you right in the fucking face from beginning to end. Well, that's six and a half minutes of hardcore punk. You yeah. I want to say this because I, I did, I did, I have this, which is sort of made me chuckle is it is a 12 inch, right? And one side has a minute and 49 minutes and one wow. and 58. And that is, that is side a of the 12 inch and mm. side and side B of, of this said 12 inch has actually three songs on it. And that's white minority, a minute and four, no values. And, <laughs> yeah, and, and so like amazing that they would print this as a 12 inch, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But, that's that's but, a beautiful record. That's one of my favorite records of all times, actually. Yeah, let me put the let me put the back cover up, and let me ask you, Kevin. And and we waited for you to to utter the black flag. It was 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 you triggered it? Um, <laughs> is this a record that resonated with you? Tell us oh, about it. So the the first time I heard Black Flag, we were in San Francisco. We were going down to San Francisco to see DOA. And we stopped at a record store in Berkeley that's no longer there called Rather Rip Records. And it was getting near closing time. And the guy at the behind the counter said, you guys want to see something funny? Let me show you how I get rid of everybody every night. And he put on the first Black Flag 7-inch, you know, Fix Me and all that stuff. And every, the, the, the four people that were there just left. They were like, fuck, he just cranked it up. And, of course, I, my brother and I said, can we buy that record? <laughs> it was mm -hmm. like, so we bought the 7-inch. When that record, and then we we went and saw Black Flag at the Mabue Gardens in San Francisco is when Ron was still singing, and it was wow. I would I thought that Ron was the their like roadie guy because he was just he just walks up and he's got ripped jeans and he just looked like a he looked like he just woke up <laughs> and and he's he's kind of pouring beer for somebody in the thing and I thought oh it must be like their roadie guy, and then they just kick into it and he he, he, he I'm right in the front row and he just slams right into me like just with the microphone he was one of the most intense singers i to this day i ever remember seeing wow. um but yeah and that and then when jealous again came out and you know the decline movie came out that that i just love that the black flag segment because it was that era you know when they were living in the church and ron was still a singer and they were just sure. um they were like really they were like dangerous and you know they were they were yeah. really fucked up guys you know like great guys i you know good friends but man they were they were kind of scary <laughs> and, 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 you know, and you know when you were talking about like doa coming in and stuff like that of course i think of black flag because black flag was you know uh, there was no roadmap before bands like black no. flag and doa yeah and you know i would think that you know at a certain point, you know, Black Flag sort of made it 
over your way. Is that safe to say? Yeah, yeah. They play. We had a little. We can. We we took a, a converted. It was a back house of a friend of a, 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 some friends live in this big house. There was this abandoned. It used to be a garage, but they built it into a kind of an enclosed room, and they didn't do anything with it. And we asked them if we could build a stage and put on shows. <laughs> it was in the worst part of Reno, so nobody in the neighborhood gave a shit. They were like, who gives a fuck, you know? So th- we built a stage, and we played two shows, and then that was what, right around the time we invited DOA. DOA came up and played, um, and then D- Black Flag came and played. And that was after uh, Ron had left, and, and Dez was the singer then. Yeah. Um, and they loved Reno. They came up and, 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 you know, because it was always, it was like, it wasn't a big scene, but there was like a, like a hundred really enthusiastic kids, you know, mm-hmm. and, and there were, you know, we had cute girls in the scene. So the guys in bands always, like, oh, we'll come up to Reno. You know, it was kind of like a, it, every, it, there, it, there was nothing to not love about the little Reno scene. But yeah, Black Flag came up and played and we're just, um, uh, really, really cool about sharing information. Like if you, if you wanted to tour, if you were considering touring, they could put you in touch with every single person in every town. You know, there was always one band that kind of was the the scene band. If it was in, in Ohio or, or Detroit, it was the Necros in Boston. It was the yeah. SSD, you know, uh, big boys down in Texas, minor threat. Everybody knew that there was a band that you wanted to contact them. And they black flag and DOA guys all had all, they had all the numbers to call, you know, like you could, or who to write and whatever. Well, well, we, we, we also, we've also talked about um, back then and, and, and oh, we, we lost them. Damn it. I, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Sign back in. It, it'll work. It, 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 yeah. Sid, get home <laughs> safe. Get home safe, man. Oh, wait, true. Isn't there something I said? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, you do. But are you, you're going to do your show from over there? Yes, I am. It'll be All the right. Here you go. T- tell, tell us about it. Go ahead. Well, guys, if you're around, I mean, I know some of you guys in Europe, I don't know if you're going to be up at midnight, but for all you guys back in the States, I'm going to be doing my show tomorrow live from London tomorrow, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just uh, look up uh, bigcellar.com backslash SDK sound system. Or if you have, uh, you know, got one of these freaking things or one of these freaking things, you know, go on. Freaking? Uh, go on, yeah. Freaking? Well, you know, these things, these, these, these electronic like Puerto devices. Rican, freaking, freaking, fucking, whatever you want to call them, Drew. Anyway, yeah. you can look up the, uh, the MixLR app on, I believe, the App Store and Google Play Store. 100% free to listen, 100% free to download, and you can just have some fun. I archive all my shows. If whatever you miss, I got another 49 in the archive somewhere. All right, Christ Almighty, bro. You telling us your life story? I'm not like certain people on the show, Drew, who wish who would not shoot. You, will. you did Ooh. good works. Good work, man. Thank you. And get home safe. All righty, Drew. All right. Talk to you later. Cheers, guys. Bye-bye. All right. Uh, what was that? Is Drew, is that you with the afro on the book cover? No, that is not me with the afro on the book cover. That that is not that is not me. Uh, but being that you asked, I will say that the New York Hardcore Chronicles Volume 1, 1980 to 1989, a flyer oral history is out. It is available at www.stonefilmsnyc.com. Buy the book. It's dope. It's got great stuff in it. All con- It's five years in the making. $24.95 plus shipping. Ships the next day. There you go. Stonefilmsnyc.com. Buy the book. You friggin' bum. That said, let us bring our guests back on. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I apologize. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, it's kind of doing it again, but we'll I think it's to... because I'm using. Uh, I don't have a webcam here at, in my little studio. I have it at the house, and I, uh, I, 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 I'm using my uh, another phone. There's this program that you can use that kind of gives the quality. It's a little better quality, but yeah, it looks like there's I'm just having a connectivity kind of deal. It, it, there, so. it comes in and out, and, and if you get frozen, just sign off and sign on. That 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 seems that seems to work. But okay, but let, let, let's say this on, on the black flag thing again is that um, you know those guys were absolute trailblazers. There was yeah. no roadmap, and I remember, and I don't want to throw anyone under the bus. But I remember Jamie from SSD Control at, when they came to town, uh, Dukowski, uh, we had these credit card numbers. And Dukowski gave us his credit card number. And I think it was, Ex, it was, Exxon's, it was Exxon's credit card number. And uh, that's what we used until, until they, would, they would turn it off. 
So that's it. We lost him again. Hopefully he will be back. Um, love the book. Bought four. You mean you bought four? I sent you four of those things. Is that right? All right. Good, good enough. Um, but yeah, if you don't have the book, feel free to buy the book. www.stonefilmsnyc.com. The truth is out there. Um, you'll love it. Uh, I want to mention a couple of upcoming shows. The next four shows. This Wednesday, December 22nd. Hold on, let me get this up. December 22nd. Mr. Mike Bromberg is on the show from SFA and Go, commonly known as Mike Bullshit. He had Bullshit Monthly Fanzine. Sunday, December 26th. It is the holiday mashup show. Smoking Word Podcast, New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Hoya Rock is going to be hosting the show with me. We're going to have a bunch of special guests. Then Sunday, January 2nd, we are super excited. Charlie Benante from Anthrax is coming on, and we're doing a Jaws show. So we're psyched on that. And then Sunday, January 9th, Mr. Jay Navarro from the Suicide Machines. Lots of great shows coming up. We ain't stopping anytime soon. In the meantime, let's give it another shot with Kevin Seconds. Hey, man. <laughs> I'm so bummed. I wanted to hear your story about the, the car numbers, man. That, that always No, no, no. We'll, that. I'll tell you again. We, uh, <laughs> we, we, Dukowski gave us what turned out to be like Exxon's credit card number. Remember yeah. how? And, and we would go to the phones and we would just, you, we would just bang these credit card numbers out. Yeah. And like until you, I get mean, I heard, I heard people do that. Yeah, I know. I, yeah. I heard that people did that. Yeah, <laughs> but, Black, but Black Flag early on, man, that was a huge influence on us, man. Yeah, they 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 would set everybody up and they knew how to yeah. tour. So it was like yeah. and they, they knew that there was this kind of a demand for the kind of music that we were all making and that there were kids out there in the middle of, of America that and out on the East Coast that needed to hear it. And so. Uh, and even up to like Canada, shit. There was so much going on up in Calgary and Edmonton and all that stuff. That, uh, yeah, yeah, they were great, man. They they always they were always down to help out, and and uh, we'll always be grateful to all those all those all those folks. Absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about New York. Do you recall the first time you came to New York to play? Early New York rec recollections. Yeah, I mean, getting out to New York and and having a a, a show booked at CBGB's with uh, Agnostic Front and Murphy's Law was like, it was almost overwhelming. It was almost like, how did we? We don't deserve this, you know. This is, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, a Sunday matinee show at CBGB's. You know, that was like the there yeah. you go. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, that that's a show that. Oh, I, that's the one you guys didn't show up at. Yeah, yeah. So the the show we got stuck in Boston. <laughs> I, I won't bore you with the fucking awful details. Oh man, that's yeah. Funny. Yeah, like 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 one of the most legendary like that flyer I've had people literally tell me they've insisted they saw us at that show and I was like no dude, you I, were awesome dude yeah. you were awesome at that show <laughs> yeah it's it's so sad Here, here's an earlier one here's um October 13th 1983 um and this is Boston at the Paradise um Probably the first time he came this way. Seven seconds from Reno, the FUs yeah. and the outpatients at the Paradise, October '83. That was eighty. That was the same tour. That was '84. That was our first oh, full-on okay. U.S. tour. That was the night before we played a, a matinee show in Boston, and then our guitar player disappeared. Uh, we could not. And this is before cell phones. Nobody knew where he went, and so uh, we drove. Or we were asking all the Boston. We had met. Oh, shut up. We met hey. all of these Boston kids, you know, became, you know, lifelong friends with, you know, all of them. And uh, they were they were taking us around to try to find our guitar player because there was rumors that our guitar player met a girl at the show and disappeared with anyway. So no, we ended no, up there was, no, there was there was rumors that he that he, that he joined. Um, what was it? Um, when the Fleetwood Mac guitar player wandered out, he joined the, the family, the children of God. He, <laughs> he like just right there. He just joined some commune and disappeared. You know? It could have happened, man. It could have yeah, happened. Yeah, yeah. But the, you know, I don't know if I, I don't know, and I still don't know the. the I, I've never gotten oh, to the bottom Scott. of this. Scott, Scott was in the outpatients. Yeah, he would know. Oh, awesome! Yeah, yeah, cool. yeah they were great. I mean, that, yeah. that Boston was really intimidating too because we we yeah. loved all the Boston bands, SSD and the FUs, and you know all of the bands that we. 
we were on the west coast we were we were really into but it, the the, I, the whole east coast thing particularly new york was just really what where we wanted to get to it was like all right because yeah. because we had a sound that was doing we did well on the west coast we had people that were into us but um i just we you know the 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 response to our first seven inch and even our second seven inch we, we got so much east coast love you know everybody we, we were getting all these great letters and postcards and we just said we got to get out to we got to get out to dc we got to get out to new york and boston and so uh yeah so i'll never forget the day the next day we were in new york and we had we took these really sad photos of us standing in front of cb's you know like well we were almost on we we almost got to play the show you know so what happened to him Oh, he just disappeared, and we didn't we didn't hear from him until the next morning. And 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 I I was I you know we were this was our first tour, so I I didn't know how to handle it. I was like, yeah. how how do you just disappear? Like you're you we thought you were dead. We didn't know if somebody beat you up. Like who knows? You know, he had half of his head was shaved. You know, and I mean, it was like I don't know what the hell happened to you. You know, it so, was a girl. Yeah, it was a fucking girl, and and then it was like, uh, but we'd heard this rumor also too that there was this like rumor that there was going to be this, uh, that, that that like Tim Yohannan, I remember called. He was he was trying to get a hold of us on tour. He was calling people ahead to try to reach us to tell us that there was this rumor that some some radical group was going to firebomb the CBGBs because Agnostic Front were this and that, and and we were yeah. like, fuck man. So anyway, it 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 was such a sad, sad, sad deal for us because we never got to play that first show but the first time was at uh it at um we came back the next year and played at um i don't know it was a bigger one of the bigger places it was rock hotel maybe it was rock hotel mm -hmm. and it was a byo show so it was like youth brigade us snfu and um that's when we really got to meet like we met roger and Vinny, and and uh they were doing the security they were like there it is this was this was just sent to me by Astoria Lou, and this is a great shot. You would be talking about this Youth Brigade Seven Seconds, That's it. yeah, Upright Citizens, and was that S? Yeah, S N F U. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the yeah. Rock, at the Rock Hotel, the one and only Rock Hotel. Yeah, yeah. And I remember yeah. Jimmy. I remember Jimmy Gestapo, Jimmy Gestapo and and uh, Roger were both doing security on the stage. So it was yeah. like, <laughs> so welcome to New York. Absolutely, yeah. And everybody yeah. was everybody was cool. You know, every, you know, everybody welcomed us, and and uh, it was just uh, a immediately we just had a we felt uh, this kinship with the people in in New York. You know, there was like a a real nice mutual cool thing going on there. So, yeah, yeah. that was kind of the start of it right there. That was the '85 tour that. Uh, yeah, uh, we. I think we're out for you know. That's when we went up into Canada for the first time and all that. Yeah, I, I, I have that. Yeah, this is banana. Yeah, I found this. Yeah, uh huh. Get a load of this. Hold on. <clears throat> Speaking of the uh, the '85 tour. Yeah, here it is in all its glory. Boom! Look at that. Oh, holy crap! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Look wow. at all that, man. Starting yeah. in Win from Winnipeg to Trenton, New Jersey, and everywhere yeah. in between. That's amazing. So that tour got cut short in after in Baltimore because our drummer Troy was out for a while, and we had Belvy play drums with us, uh -huh. uh, who, who was a New York kid. He was from Syracuse. Um, yeah. He got jumped before our set in Baltimore outside of the, of the club, and they somebody busted a, a beer bottle in his eardrum and uh, got all this glass. So that basically was the end of the tour like we had a few dates left that i think that what we're looking at was kind of like the tour we hoped would happen this is, but this is the wish list yeah <laughs> but uh he ended up getting jumped and then we, we we literally drove straight from uh baltimore straight back to reno in a matter of days and he, you know it was just a the end of, it was just awful it was like bad luck and everybody oh. was bummed so yeah. i want to i got a tie in here and uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna bring on uh, Mr. Matt Gray, who who plays drums uh, in Antidote NYHC with me. And uh, what's up, buddy? And hey, we're gonna, what's up, we're gentlemen? Gonna do... Hey, Kevin. Hey, you're kind of. Uh, are you frozen too a little bit? No, I'm good. No, you're okay. You're okay. All right. So uh, we're gonna do T-shirt of the week. But you didn't switch T-shirts. What happened? No. Well, I got. I got ready. I'm always okay. ready. You know that. All right, go so, ahead. You got so, the floor. You got the floor. All right. So I have two 
two shirts today. So this one we have, we've got this one. Oh, wow. And this was from 1990. <laughs> Jesus. So, okay. I don't know, somewhere along the lines, seeing you guys. But this one and this shirt, Kevin, I've seen go for $300 on eBay. This is oh, the original. Man. Not a repressed reprint. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's a, it's a classic design, man. That's great. That looks good. <laughs> I got this. I wore this for my wedding. And, um, I got this uh, Circle Jerk, Seven Seconds, and Vampire Lesbos at City Gardens. I remember that show well. 80, uh, oh, 88 probably, huh? I was so nervous to talk to you guys. I was shaking, and I was talking to Troy, and I didn't know what to talk about. So I'm just like, uh, what kind of symbols do you use? And all my friends were like just making fun of me the whole ride home. But like, <laughs> That's hilarious. What kind of symbols do you use? So, that's awesome. So here, here's here's, awesome. A, here's a bit of the tie yeah. in here. This look is at you, Drew. What do you for, got? Like a for, database for, that you're just. <laughs> you know what? I actually do at this point. That's whenever awesome. I, whenever I get on a plane, yeah, and and I take you know whenever I fly somewhere, I just label everything and and put everything in folders. Yeah. And I just I and and I've learned and once the show started, I figured out how to label them properly so I can bring them up on in an instant, but. This is the exact show, right? This is Circle Jerks, Seven Seconds, and That's Vampire Lesbos. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, a, what, what a is, lineup. What, what is Vampire <laughs> Lesbos? What is that? I don't remember. I don't remember seeing them, but I Me yeah, neither. that was yeah. I don't remember what their deal was at all. We have to find, we have to figure that so, out. So I, I guess the tie-in here, Kevin, is I know we, we talked about CBGBs a little bit, but City Gardens. Whenever I seems like I look at any flyer. A calendar of city gardens, either yeah. seven seconds is on there or you're on there in some in some capacity. Could you give us a little perspective on city gardens in your relationship with that club? Yeah, I mean, city, I was going to say earlier, city gardens was at, you know, we like we love CBs and we love, but city gardens ended up becoming sort of the our, like a home base. It seemed like we played there every month. Uh, Randy now was really cool to us. You know, he, 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 flew us out a couple times just to play one-off shows, you know, like, um, and it was just a, it was a great room. It was, it was in the sketchy fucking neighborhood. I remember, uh, I, I was, I was seeing a girl in who lived in New York. I'd come out like when we be on break and I'd come out and hang out with her in New York and I would take the train, uh, when seven seconds was playing in city gardens, I, or I'd go see bands at city gardens. I'd take the train in and walk from, the train station to, to city gardens <laughs> and i don't know i did that three or four times before f someone said are you fucking out of your mind do you understand the neighborhood you're right, walking through right. and I, you know i i had no clue i was just oblivious to it but um yeah i mean it was it, it i i gotta say and you know i'm 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 not i'm anti-violence i'm i've never been a, a, a you know a tough guy but there was something about that danger of of just knowing that you could get the shit kicked out of you on the way to the gig that still made me feel like, hey, we're in this, we're in this for the right reasons, you know, like yeah, we're yeah. still doing this. And uh, there was always an element of sort of, of sort of danger and something at any minute could go off, you know. And uh, yeah. I loved it. It I, some of I, the most memorable shows I think we ever played was at City Gardens. Here's, sure. here's another one. Uh, I guess this is a little bit later, looking at you know Bullet Boys and. And uh, yeah, but here's here, here's another one, uh, another, and I have an, yet another one from from City Gardens, and this is um, hold on, this is is there a date on this? Oh, this is February 1990. This one, and this one says acoustic seconds. Uh, yeah, with you and Ernie from Token <laughs> Entry. That and, was my look, big headlining oh, I gig, missed that man. Show. That was that was uh that was my the first time I ever played a acoustic in front of a crowd. Wow. And and what a dumb fucking idea that was, you know. Like, that. <laughs> but and the only reason I did it was the only reason I did it was because Ernie was so like into it. He he just kept saying, "No, we got to do it. We got to do it." And I'm like, "All right, if you're in, I'm in." Um, I want to say that I, that might have been the show where we opened. I think we opened for Ween at that show. Maybe that maybe we did another show where we ended up opening for Ween as acoustic. Wow. I hated the acoustics. That was Randy. Now I don't know why he 
we listen as that. But yeah, that was a weird show. Uh, you know, hmm. whatever. Yeah. <laughs> that, the good the good thing was that I was at a place that was that was friendly. Everybody was really whether they liked the acoustic thing or not, they were very nice and they didn't throw shit. So I was I was cool with it. You know. Here's here's a shot of you at at uh, seven seconds. I guess this is a little bit later in the game. Right? Yeah. <laughs> based, based on the length of the hair. So, right. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But but this is you could tell those those sort of uh infamous city gardens monitors, you know, those monitors, boxes, the white big those, ugly those, white things. Yeah, yep. those 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 <laughs> box those box monitors. And yeah. you know, Matt, didn't you just say you 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 were just at City Gardens for like yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday, Doing, what, you didn't get my pictures. I sent you pictures to post up. Yeah, yeah. Is the yeah. building They're still probably not up? the best? Yeah, tell us if the building's yeah. still there. Wow. Oh, yeah, I was there yesterday because, like I said, I was drum teching a, a couple shows for for you know for a band, and um, on the way from Philly to the Starland, I was like, I gotta stop by Trenton and just, you know what I mean, just take it all in. And the, the door was open. And you can walk in there. I, I'm not going in there. And then in the back, there's I like mean, a it was like abandoned. In the back. It was like abandoned, and the door was open. Um, what's that? I missed that. I'm sorry. What was it like abandoned? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's shit everywhere. I'm kind of bummed you didn't get that picture to be able to put up. I, I did. I'm, I'm keep talking. I'm I'm doing. Okay, it. Okay, yeah, doing it. yeah. It's pretty. It's definitely pretty gnarly. And uh, um. Yeah, I wanted to go in, but I know my wife would have killed me if I would have went in there. And um, because you know, I don't know who's living in there. I don't know what's in there. But um, wow, yeah, the I'm door was open. You can walk there. in. It's still there. Yeah, as of yesterday. So yeah. Is there? Is there any? Was there? Was there talk of? I thought there was talk a few a few years back where somebody was trying to do something with it or something. Is that there right? There was, or? but never yeah. came to fruition or whatever. But you know, wow. just from historical aspect, that at that room just. I mean, you know, for all oh, of yeah. us, it's just a great. That's it's you know, a little. Great. You sent me what you sent me is a little blurry, but here it is. iPhone. There it is. Oh there it is. yeah, that got picked. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. Look at I, that. I can I, I can smell it. I can smell yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, you know, we've we've had um on the show, um. This is this is a cool shot. Um. <clears throat> He goes. He he. Why am I? His name is escaping me. He's been on the show. Oh, that's he cool. goes back to these locations. That's great. And, sure. and takes the and he went and he lines them up perfectly. Oh, you that's know? really that's cool, cool, man. Yeah, yeah you're, that's it's called, awesome. It's called your band was here. It's on nice. Instagram. I highly highly recommend anybody if you have one of these communication devices. Your yeah. band was here. Yeah, and, I'll check uh, that out. He does that's all awesome. that kind of cool, all that kind of cool stuff. You know. I didn't miss out just stuff like that. That's why I went back to, you know, just check out and everything. So, yeah, I'm so happy that, you know, I'm, I'm happy that, that there were, at some point the, the, the scene was really, it started to become very documented, which is nice because I always yeah. kind of thought yeah. that it wasn't going to, I thought, yeah. will, will people ever consider this important enough to, you know, in history? And luckily people sure. did and do. So that's, a abso yeah. absolutely. And, and, and one of my, you know, regrets, and I love I love having regrets. Like I, I embrace my regrets. I like yeah. I, I, I've learned to sort of I enjoy my you regrets. From it. I hear you. Yeah, I, I enjoy them. And uh, is that although I did document a lot as as a, as a teenager in, in, in Boston and New York, I really wish I just would have just documented more. And I'm you know yeah. I'm a documentarian and yeah, I documented yeah. a lot. But even just I see people now who just took pictures of just lifestyle, the streets, the buildings, mm -hmm. that kind you know, I, I just, I just regret here, here, here's one, one last one um, from city gardens, seven seconds, angry Samoans, flaming lips. <laughs> look at that bill. Think about look, that bill for a second. <laughs> look who's playing. Look who's playing after you a couple of I, uh, Graham Chapman from Monty Python. That's insane. <laughs> and, and, and then, and then Dr. Timothy Leary, Dr. what is it? What, what is that? <laughs> what was what was Randy doing? You know, like <laughs> he's, he's all over the place. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah that built that stuff. just that flyer alone really says it all, doesn't it? Well, the exploited of... always put on great shows at City Gardens. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, man. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. All right, Matt. Well, thank you, buddy. Um, can I just show one know? more thing? Please, please. <laughs> 
sorry, Sid Kid. I'm gonna have to out vinyl you today. <laughs> What's up with that? Oh the green rag, right? God. Well, All right. Yeah. One of the one of the right few there. other documented Reno uh, commitments to vinyl. That's amazing. So it's a great right? seven. You know, you know this band, Kevin? Yeah. Well, Steve's yeah. in that band. He should. Steve's in oh. that band. Yeah. Oh. I don't. I don't yeah. know. This. His, I don't know jack shit. They were. They were. His actually names really on the back. Yeah. yeah, I did backing <laughs> vocals. They they uh they tricked me. They 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 were one of those contrarian bands. They were really funny Joker guys, and they they were they were doing everything they could to piss off the straight edge kids in Reno. And so they uh, would they would do you know they would purposely overdo the beer drinking thing or whatever. They were actually really a great live band, but they tricked me into s singing backing vocals for a song called I, I I like drugs. I didn't know at the time. <laughs> we still like drugs, yeah. And we still like drugs, yeah. yeah. Oh, and, yeah. and Dave, the singer back then, he's no longer with us, but he was. He's like he goes, I got you, I got you. I was like, hey, whatever, you know, I got a sense of humor. I'm not... Thanks, a great seven. I'll, I'll see you at rehearsal. Bro. See you, Matt. Nice awesome. meeting you, man. man. Cheers, Kevin. Okay. Thank Woo! you. <laughs> Take care, man. Thank you, <laughs> Matt Gray. Good dude. Awesome. Good, good, good dude. Um, let me take a sponsor break and uh, let me let me shout out a couple sponsors and let's come back and let's talk <clears> about <throat> the straight edge thing a little bit. Sure. All right. Well, there you have it. It is the New York Hardcore Chronicles. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Our guest today is Kevin Seconds, and we are sponsored by The Organic Grill, the Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Chacho's Tacos, Generation Records, and New York Hardcore Comics opened in 2013, selling comic books, punk rock, and hardcore memorabilia, toys, statues, skateboard decks, tapes, vinyl, and all things horror. We love helping bands push their demos and new tracks, so please stop by and drop off your new music. We have in-store events like Magic the Gathering and Warhammer tournaments, plus meet and greets with bands and some live performances. Open seven days a week and shipping worldwide. Find us online through Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and eBay, located at 117 Main Street in Dobbs Ferry, New York, www.newyorkhardcorecomics.com. Come on now, the Texas Silver Rush is a jewelry design firm and boutique store located in the birthplace of the Texas country music scene, goddamn Fredericksburg, Texas. They specialize in working with musicians in all music genres to design and create unique one-off pieces, as well as style them for stage, album covers, promo, and social media exposure. Their client list includes Rock Roll Hall of Famers, Greg Rolay, Ringo Starr, and of course, Agnostic Front. During this current pandemic, all information and online sales are being taken on their Facebook and Instagram page, and of course, www the Texas Silver Rush .com. Somebody asked before about where you can buy the book. Once again, pay attention for Christ's sake. www.stonefilmsnyc.com. It's the New York Hardcore Chronicles, Volume 1, 1980 to 1989, a flyer oral history. Five years in the making. What's up? Five years in the making. Second printing out now. They're all they're all numbered. And signed by the author, that being me. So don't be afraid. Buy the book. Support the show. Speaking of supporting the show, I know there's a couple people out there going, damn, I love this show. How can I support it? Funny you should ask. Patreon is our community within the community. Support the show. The book is free, by the way, for all patrons. If you have been a patron um, and you don't have the book, Send me a message. All you got to do is pay for the shipping. You know? Um, why am I so nice to Matt? Because <sighs> he's a hell of a drummer and I don't want to lose him. Um, that said, uh, yeah. Join Patreon. Also, I want to shout out Jose Pepe Bayon One Leston, who sent me, sent me a, a Christmas card, a, a season a, a card. Uh, dear Drew, just saying thanks. Your show really means a lot. It has been a blessing. Jose Pepe Bayon won less than. This is the only card that I've received. I'm not big on the holidays, but that's really very thoughtful of you, Jose. I really appreciate that. That That's very nice. Um, I want to thank all the Facebook pages that support me and repost all the stuff for the show. Thanks a lot. Uh, if you're watching in rerun, there is a subscribe button there. Subscribe to the show, please. You get alerts as to when the next show is. If you have a communication device, which is pretty safe to say everybody on this planet right now does, please um, follow me on Instagram at Stone Films NYC. There it is on the bottom. 
Pick it up right now. Follow me, Stone Films NYC on Instagram. Also, we're going to be doing questions in a bit with our guest, Kevin Seconds. There is a super chat feature. Costs a couple bucks. It comes up in color. I can't miss it. You move to the front of the line. Sometimes I miss a couple of the questions. And it is also a great way to, to support this show. So please, let's, st let's start the war on Christmas. Yep. Don't be a Patreon. There it is. Join Patreon. Um, what else do I... You know what? While we're here, while we're here, let me announce a couple of shows before we bring our guest back. Let me clear the deck real quick of all this chazerai, as my grandma would say. Stop with the chazerai. Um, let me get rid of all the... Okay. The next, next four shows, Sunday, January 12th. This is a cool one. Mr. Peter Leeds. This is a, si a, a side trip show. Peter Leeds is going to be on the show. Peter Leeds is the former manager for Blondie. This guy has an incredible history in rock and roll music. He managed Blondie during their heyday. He also managed the Runaways, uh, Roberta Flack, and Judy Collins. Wednesday, January 19th, Gary G. Man Sullivan from Cro Mags, B 52s, Bernie Worrell, etc. Sunday, January 23rd, another side trip show. BMX legend and musician Mr. Rick Thorne is going to be on the show. And then Wednesday, February 2nd, Mr. Mark Weiss Guy Weiss, photographer. All tons of great, great rock and roll photography. So lots of good stuff coming up. Things are moving forward. In the great words of Chacho's Tacos, we ain't stopping anytime soon. Uh, that said, um, I think I covered the la, 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 lot. Let's bring our guest back on. Let me make sure. Yeah, let's bring Kevin back on. Hey, man. Hey, we go. You know, we got we got some real characters coming on, you know. No kidding, man. That's I'm so impressed. It's great. I love it. Well, it's cool. People want to come on the show now, which is great. You know, it's Good. like it, yeah. it's got its own legs and and um you know, I'm really grateful for it. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm really I'm really really grateful for that. It, Let, let's yeah. let's talk about this. Let's talk about this straight edge thing a little bit. <laughs> um you know, we're we're the same age and of course <clears throat> remember you know, when Minor Threat dropped the seven inch and, and the song was on there. Yeah. And I mean, for me at the time, uh, you know, it, 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 it was kind of just another track on a great seven inch. Yeah. Um, and, and, and we sort of, you know, moved off it. I think it was only until uh, it was a couple years later when sort of the next wave of American hardcore came on and the next wave and everybody sort sort of built on it. Um, my perception is that, You've never really waved and pushed sort of the the, the straight edge sort of um, flag very hard. Um, I, I, I know you are a straight edge guy, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, right. But yeah. <laughs> what's what sort of? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm not using the right words, but let's just keep. Give us your take on it, and uh, you know uh, how it how it resonated for you or didn't. Um, it, re it early on, it res it resonated deeply because we were these kids in Reno who didn't drink and didn't right. kind of, and we were freaks like, no, you know, there was no social status to be, you know, if you hung out with people, there was just nothing. Everybody, you know, my, people of my age at the time would go to these parties and keg parties or whatever. And, you know, it, it was just expected that you part, you would partake in that. And, and I tried when I was a kid because I didn't want to be a fucking weirdo. I wanted to fit in and I wanted, yeah. you know, hang out with people, but it just isn't, it wasn't what I was into. So, so hearing about these crazy kids and clear across the country that were like, uh, aligning themselves with this idea. I, I, at first I thought was the greatest thing ever. And I agree with you. Like I straight edge was like my least favorite song on that amazing EP, yeah. you know? So yeah. I didn't think about it. It wasn't until I, I got, you know, I, I became, we became friends with the Ian and the guys in D minus right pretty early sure. on. We were writing letters and, and talking on the phone 
and uh it it was just a it was nice to know that that we weren't you know off uh, on in how we felt like being these young kid young guys that were trying to just get shit done um so at first i thought it was great and i embraced it but then uh there was also something in me that sort of I, I just built in thought that this was going to turn on itself and uh end up end up creating more weird barriers yeah. in a scene that was already fragmented and weird and small. So mm -hmm. I worried about it. I was really concerned about it. And I didn't want to just, I also didn't want to just hang my hat on that because I thought like, fuck, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want that to be my identity. You know, I want to, I want to turn into something on my own, you know, in my yeah. own way. I don't want to just be identified by something that I, I could already tell was going to kind of get popular and kids were going to embrace and yeah, sure enough, within, you know, the first couple of years, there was already these sort of m movements in Boston and all these places. And it was getting, um, you know, arguably it was there was a violent aspect to it that I just didn't I, I wanted no part of, you know, yeah. um, mm -hmm. and it just it kind of went from there. And and I uh, people would get a, you. Had, it's interesting. You had that perspective early on as, as a young as a mm. young person, you know, that that's it was I must say uh, somewhat rare, <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, it, 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 I, yeah. I, it, you know, it, we we related to it, and I would always say in interviews, I'd say, "Look, I'm str I'm a, I, I don't drink, I don't do drugs, I don't smoke, yeah. but mm -hmm. I, I'm a little nervous about embracing it." And, and that caused problems for us. You know, uh, the yeah. more militant aspects of straight edge looked at us as being sort of like, "Well, why wouldn't you embrace it? It's a positive, it's a cool thing." And I'm like, "Yeah, well, I it should be, but if you're if you're if a kid is drinking a beer at a show and you're going around smacking out of his hand, you know, it's like, well." What, kind of shit is that you know like i didn't relate to that you know so yeah, yeah. It, it 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 it's just been something that we never were uh comfortable embracing fully and um i don't you know if you ask me i'll always tell the truth i i yeah. i never got into i tried it and i i didn't care for it it never did much for me you know but i'm also not i've grown up around alcoholics my whole life and i've mm -hmm. some of my closest friends have struggled with it and i'm not going to turn my back on them because uh, I, I don't, you know, it's, it doesn't work with my, my philosophy or whatever, yeah. you know, well, like RS says, is he a life for straight edge or, or did he get mad fucked up and went straight? I mean, obviously <laughs> you, 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 you experimented a little bit, but you know, it was never, you know. Yeah, and also, you know, as a kid, I saw uh, what alcohol and drugs did to family yeah. members and friends, and and we lived in shitty play apartment complexes, and I I saw it going out. You know, we lived yeah. we we're always around, you know, bikers and all these people, and so it was always like it was always around that, and yeah. and it uh, it 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 just uh, it became normalized in my life. Like you just that was part of what you're supposed to kind of grow into, and I well, it I never. It's, I think it's safe to say that you and I having, you know, we grew up as part of sort of that, that um, blank generation. It, it, we were neither, it wasn't Woodstock, it wasn't MTV. We were sort of yeah, in this in-between yeah. thing. And, and, and drugs and alcohol were a very accepted part of the culture growing up. I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, especially, I mean, I can speak for myself growing up here in New York City. It mm -hmm. was, it was, it was prevalent everywhere, yeah. you know? Yeah, and kind of so. romanticized and, and, yeah. and turned into something sure. that seemed alluring and cool. And I yeah. grew up with, with that idea too. But yep. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this beloved release a little bit. Um, <laughs> I mean, in 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 retrospect, uh it, it certainly um has stood up well, I think, you know. Um seems so. Seems yeah, so. yeah. Do you guys, when you go out, you guys still play a bunch of stuff off it, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we um, there were there were points in our, in our in our history where we would yeah. we would try to introduce more stuff, new stuff that was coming out. But we always, you know, there were always the songs that still had great meaning to us, not just Boys Fun and uh, Here's Your Warning and those songs. They always had a. We never strayed too far away from this album, especially. I mean, this album put us on the yeah. map and it, and it opened up. Sure. Uh, it opened us up to people worldwide, you know. So, um, yeah. yeah, I can't, I can't, and and I don't know if you've heard the re the reissue or seen the the packaging, but um, when when we were first approached by True uh, Trust Records, it was like I was really nervous about it because I was like, what are they going to do with it? You know, what are they? How are they yeah, going to? Here we what go. Cheesy right? shit. Are they going to do? Here we and, go. Uh, yeah. I, I'm I'm so completely overwhelmed, and and I love the re reissue. It sounds great. It looks great, and I love that the story kind of gets to get 
be told um, through various voices in the booklet and stuff. And uh, yeah, I'm really proud of it. You know, like I, I, I've always had issues with the way it was recorded because we didn't know anything about being in a recording studio <laughs> at the time. Right. And we were working right. with this metal guy that, you know, was just like, all right, man, let's make you sound good. You know, like he just, yeah, right. and, on, and boys. We, <laughs> we had no voice. I didn't, you know, now yeah. uh, if I go in a studio, I'm like, nope, I, I'll get right behind the desk and I'll work. But yeah. then I didn't know what I was doing. And it was just like, really intimidating you know um yeah yeah I, I i liked it bad luck brett says i love that the more the straight edge scene went militant seven seconds put out albums like rock together and new wind <laughs> yeah yeah it was important because i you know I, uh one of my, my one of my biggest influences punk rock wise was was um champ 69 and and oh, come I, on I, now well and i you yeah. know i love i love the story behind you know they were they got so big but there were they were, they were pulled by there were these 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 sort of nationalistic factions yep. that embraced them the football culture and meanwhile they were preaching it was like unity and get up on stage with us this is your stage sing with yeah. us yeah. and i i bought into it that would to me that was like more than than any other band that we could have been influenced by i think uh, sham that that sense of of community and and family was really important sure. because we grew up in uh, you know me and my brother especially we grew up in uh unsupported and on we didn't have a community growing up you know we were just kind yeah. of we were moving around a lot went to different schools and so i think i as a young person i really uh i, I sought that and, and uh punk rock just seemed a, a natural place for me for that so i know a lot yeah. of people gave a shit for being you know you know, oh, they're, you know, fucking um, just a bunch of goody goodies and all that stuff. But it was never about that. It was always just like, look, we got to we have a thing that that we can protect and, and nurture. And uh, why are we fucking it up and destroying it? And it didn't make sense to me, you know, sure. go destroy shit outside of it. Fine. I don't care. But like the scene itself and the and the people involved, I didn't I never got that ever. Yeah. Um, uh, Hugh Davis says the reissue is great. New win next. Uh, yeah, uh, walk together, rock together is going to have a, 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 a reface and, and new one too. And there's a lot of cool stuff coming up. All the, all the principal people involved in all those records are, are going to have a part in it. And, uh, I'm, I'm really excited about it, man. I, I think they're going to get a, they're going to get a nice reissue. Um, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> yeah. It's nice in this day and age too. There's certain, uh, entities out there that really take the time and care to yeah. do these reissues, you know, properly. And that's, that's really, it's really great. For sure. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and, and Joe and, and, you know, the Matt, you know, and at trust, I mean, they're, 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 they're in it. They're in it. You know, they're yeah. fans, they're friends, then they get it. And they're not just cheesy industry people that are looking to try to make a quick buck, you know? And, uh, I mean, we, we spent, you know, like a half a year talking all all throughout this before anything even started to get worked on. And it was I, I, I I'm really pleased to be in, connected with it. You know, that's great, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, um, you know, you know, the, the first uh, the uh, the crew and walk together, rock together was on the BY was on the BYO label, correct? Yes. Yep. And and then and, and then. uh after that, didn't you guys, uh, I, you guys ended up on, on, was it Atlantic for a minute? No, we, uh, after that, we, we signed with a label called Restless, which Enigma okay. was the main label. Um, uh -huh. and Social Distortion was on it and TSO, well, a few other bands. Okay. Um, and then we, we, um, Oh yeah, we we signed to a major label in '95 when when everybody was looking, all the labels were looking to find the next Green Day and Rancid. Yeah, sure. Um, at literally yep. every band I knew, even bands that had broken up and hadn't been done, <laughs> they were getting offers. And right. for us at the time, we we had still been touring and playing, but we had, you know, there was no there were no independent labels that wanted to even touch us because we had done New End and Praise and ourselves and records that were just like you know for for the longest time records that were considered like anti-hardcore right yeah um nowadays of course the, the the most requests we we would get are those records you know the people some of the toughest guys from new york have come up to me guys and bands gone yo kev i gotta tell you man uh, you know so force <laughs> revolution is one of my favorite you know which always <laughs> cracks me up but you know back then it was like awesome. I, I don't know how you know how familiar we're with that story but we were like ostracized people were like yeah. not in having it the hard courts were just like nope i want well, off people, this is I, I remember people were, <laughs> yeah people were throwing that the the 
the the the you two around yeah. you know and that's like oh you know, yeah you know? I, and you know I, I look then i didn't understand it but i get it and i and, and i we learned to live with that we we understood yeah. what was happening yeah. and we knew that we were taking a you know we kind we probably could if we would have made another couple walk to directors or cruise we probably would have been making tons of money and all that stuff but um it, it was there was so much going on there were so many uh, band member changes. There were there were influences were coming out in and sure. out. You know, I always wanted to have a start a side band with the same members to play. You know, the stuff that we were listening to on the side, like you know, the Cure and the Cult, and nobody yeah, wanted yeah. to do it. Like, well, we'll call it seven seconds. So, yeah, it was it, it was messy, and uh, labels, independent labels, weren't that interested, and so we just didn't have much. We didn't want to put it out ourselves, and. Um, when the labels started to sniff around, we were like, well, you know, we always talk shit and we always say, no, let's just see what they got to say. We also wanted to buy a new van and, and re you know, upgrade our gear. So we were like, we need some money somewhere so we can stay touring, you know? So, sure, sure. um, the deal we got, that was with a label called immortal, which was, which yes, was a Sony, yeah, immortal, a Sony, right. Sony company. Sony, right. right. And, um, yeah, it was, it, it was, it was a, you know, we released one record. We, we, we knew it wasn't going to sell a ton of records. We, we knew that what we were into, they it was all you know we didn't have to change anything we did everything we wanted to do we recorded at the studio we wanted to and it was like a year-long experience that we'd never really had and came and went and that's it <laughs> you know it was like and then, and then you're back you're back back to yeah to, yeah like, we, we we had a, a van we had new gear and we could we could pay rent for a couple months you know it was a it was a kind of a, it was not a terribly uh, you know unpleasant experience but yeah, I'm sort of glad we did it just because we for about a year and a half we just saw how the industry really was and it was sure. it was scary. It was an interesting weird. time. It was an interesting time for the industry too. You yeah. know, that that, yeah. that it was sort of, you know, certainly before the 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 big change, the the the, the internet, but you know, there was still a lot of money going around then and bands getting signed and yeah, and there it was still, you know. There was I was I was around for that. That was that was pretty. Je Jeff Bronx Jeff Bronx says I was mad at the band back then for changing up the music, which I ended up loving. <laughs> <laughs> hey Jeff, you know. yeah, I mean I we got that a lot, and and uh, I, you know I I'm cool with it. I mean, look, we we never we never stopped thinking we were a hardcore band. That was the problem. Right. You know, we we grew our hair out, but we always felt like we were. You know, we were we were also big. We were fans uh, of bands like the Minutemen and the Big Boys, sure. who were doing they were doing punk rock, but they were also doing weird jazzy shit and funk stuff. Sure, sure. So in my mind, I thought, hey, you know, uh, we're we're good people. We're, we're 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 you know, we've always been about the the kids and going out and playing people will, will get it. And, and some yeah. people did we, a whole crew of new people came in at that point who didn't care for the, the earlier stuff, you know? So yeah. I don't know. It, it turned out. Okay. It's, it's yeah. interesting. I, I've been, I went through the same thing with, with when I was, you know, in antidote and we grew our hair long and we did the rock <laughs> record and, you right. know, and for years, you know, I was, you know, I was vilified for it. And now right. People come up and go, wow, I fucking love that record, man. It's Isn't that great. funny? Yeah. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, do you yeah. remember, do you remember when Bad Religion released um, uh, Into, the Back, Into the Known? Back, yeah. Into the Unknown. Everyone hated it, right? Now there are people that will say, I actually like that record. I, I never liked the record, but I remember I there are people now that said, you know, I actually like that record. It's funny. I think you know? they <laughs> played some of it recently live. <laughs> Did they? I, I think so. <laughs> Jessica Marks says, I love every era of Seven uh, Seconds. So, you, you know, there's, there, there's a couple of them out there, man. Yeah, <laughs> for know? sure. For sure. But, but, but listen, you know, like we've said many times, art is, art is uh, cyclical in nature, right? Absolutely. It's it, it, it yeah. just the wave goes in and the wave goes out. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. You just gotta, you gotta do what you love to do. And, and, you know, and not everybody's going to love it. And there's no reason to hate people who don't love what everything you do. I, you know, whatever <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah. it doesn't stop you from doing it. I want to talk a little bit about um, Positive Force Records. Mm, here's a yeah. here's a flyer oh, for a yeah. Seven Seconds Token Entry Show at at, at CVs. Yep. But um, Positive Force Records, uh, give us the background, how it came together, uh, and, and some of the stuff you put out. Uh, yeah, I you know I I was doing shows in Reno, underground shows, and I you know, always wanted to have a name like something presents, you know, and whatever. And so I started a thing called United Front. Um, and the idea was sort of based on a, a group that was out of California, uh, the Bay Area, uh, San Francisco, called New Youth Productions. That was just mm. punks that were putting on shows. And their biggest thing was they actually managed to put on a benefit and have the Clash headline. Oh, um, wow. 
Yeah. And it was, and it really inspired me. I was like, well, that's, I, there was some sense of activism in me at an early, I wanted to do something more than just be in a band. I wanted to try to help. We were, we started to do food drives and we started working with right. uh, some, some local uh, organizations that fed the homeless. And, and so that was a start. And, um, uh, so I started doing it and then I had close friends near and dear to me. Um, Bessie Oakley, who was in a great all girl band from Reno called the Rex. Um, my, my then girlfriend, Angie, there was, there was a few friends that were really up for it. And so we started a group and we call it positive force. And initially it was just, uh, it was just to sort of tag. It was just to get kids that would come to shows a little more, um, aware of what was going on outside sure. of our little scene, you know? And, uh, so like I said, every show would be like, bring a can of food and get a, a can of food and get a dollar off or whatever the hell. Yeah, and yeah. it just, it, it grew. We started to have meetings. We started to, uh, get involved, involved with different other groups, uh, anti-nuke groups and anti anti-fascist groups and all, mm -hmm. and it, it got, it started to really become a big thing. Um, and then, uh, people from other kids from other cities were reaching out saying, Hey, would you mind if we start a, a positive force Vegas and pos positive force Chicago and uh, all this Mark Anderson started positive force DC, which really became the definitive became oh, wow. the group that I, I would have loved for us to become, but he just, he put so much love and, and energy and, and had such a good, good support base and they became exactly what it is. But I was veering away from the group so much more, I wanted to make it into a label. And so, uh, I, I said, I'm going to, I'm going to take over the, take it over as a label and I'm going to start trying to release bands, uh, that eventually we could do all the seven seconds records, but also we could release new bands. Uh, sure. and, uh, that, that was how, that's how it started. Um, uh, we had played a show, um, in Connecticut. We met Ray and, and, and Purcell, uh, who had just started youth of the day and uh they sent me their demo and i really loved it and i just loved them i, I loved them as people you know we got along great and they were just really fun fun kids to hang out with and loved us and everything was always fun we were so yeah i said hey how about if i put up the seven inch and they're like fuck okay cool <laughs> and that was that was kind of how it all started you know uh same with verbal assault you know i just fell in love with them um token, token entry, token entry. Pagan, pagan babies too right pagan babies from philly um yeah, yeah, yeah. That, those first and those initial that first 10 records were really yeah. just all about just people that I, I loved as people and uh, musically, you know, and sure. But I also wasn't geared. To, I, I, you know, I wasn't yeah. set up for it. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. I, I thought it was going to be easier than it was. Seven seconds was touring a lot then. So I, I, I wasn't home a lot and we'd get, I come home and there'd be boxes of mail, you know, just like, <laughs> you know, and, and it, I like l literally probably if I look in some of my old shit, I'll, I can find an, a, an envelope that I never open that'll have like a $10 money order in it for, you know, like stickers. And it, uh, I just wasn't good at it, you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't yeah. organized. Had, had I had, um, had I had the good thing is I had, I was lucky enough to have a friend like Ian McKay who would always get on the phone with me and, and walk me through shit. Sure. But I also didn't have bandmates that wanted, I, if I could have got even one person in the band to help me run the label, I think it would have been better, but it was just me yeah. and my girlfriend at the time, Angie. And it was just, it, we just got overwhelmed. You know? and, I mean, and it's, it, you, it takes an incredible attention to detail and yeah. patience to, to handle all that stuff. Just the volume of it yeah. is, you know, so it's hard to be, I'm in a band and I'm running a label. Exactly. And, and, and you sort of and, have to like running. You have, you sort of like, you have to you like, know, the, you, know, you have to be it. that, you have to be that Jeff Nelson guy. Exactly. Like yeah. that guy, that's the dude that that's, that's the template that yeah. that's the, that's the guy like, yeah. who, who is like, you know, yeah, like absolutely. He, he's sitting there playing drums and yet thinking like, yeah, I got to fill that order when I, you know, like, <laughs> right? like that's him. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, like, there's the people that are dude. built for it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. and, and, and I wanted to be that person, but I, I just did finally had to admit to myself, like, you don't like the business part of it. You're not good at, sh you know, sh getting on the phone and making phone calls back. You know, I'm yeah. better at it now, but back then I really hated all of that stuff, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. So makes yeah. sense before we take the final break and then come back and take some questions from around the world i want to talk about this a little bit and that is your your acoustic uh <laughs> endeavor and uh -huh. what 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 was the impetus for you to start this and I, I i gotta tell you man you know in doing my homework for the show you know i start i started um listening to some of the older seven second stuff 
And then I went to this and I absolutely got stuck on this. I just oh, nice. ended up losing. I, I just, I, I guess it, it, it just really, it just really speaks to me at this point. And, and um, I got to say, you know, you're a pretty damn good songwriter, you know? Hey, thanks, you, you, dude. I appreciate you, you, that. You, you know, you really, you know, you really, um, I think you've, you've honed your craft through the years. And uh, <laughs> thank you. You, you, you know, you have a lot of great stuff and I love the acoustic stuff. And I got, I got stuck on it and just ended up listening to that for the whole day. Until oh, the show, nice. You know, so yeah. tell us a little bit about how this came to be and, 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 and where it's at now. Um, when I moved back to Sacramento in 88, I uh, was just kind of burnt out. I, I, on doing shows and, and being part of a scene and, and, I uh, had written all these songs and I, 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 sometimes I demo them for the guys in the band and they listen, they're like, eh, you know, whatever, but everything was always recorded or it always started out. Even a lot of the fast seven second stuff started out on an acoustic guitar. Cause I just yeah, didn't sure. have an electric guitar. Sure. Um, but I always, I always wanted to just keep writing songs, and I, I also wanted to keep playing. And, and, and when band members started having kids, and we, we were touring less, I still wanted to go out. And I'm like, well, I would try to put together a band, and it would never last, and, and I would just get irritated, or they get ir irritated with me. And I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna, you know, I, I'm just gonna go out with my guitar in a rental car and see what I, what I could do. And so I started yeah. doing that uh, probably in. 90 i think 96 was the first time i went out on the road by myself for a full tour and um i had no idea if anybody was going to give a shit uh people uh, that that first tour people were packing places because oh you know it's the guy from seven seconds he's going to do something great of course you know they'd hear me on acoustic guitar not doing even doing seven second songs and it was you know the next tour was like less people you know but yeah i just i i wanted to keep stay on the road and and everybody else in the band was starting to slow down a little bit and i just said well you know i'm i, I i've had no luck at putting a band a new band together i don't even have that much of a desire to be in a new band so i might as well just go out and play and so i was going out and playing record stores basements people's I houses see, i i i came across uh, your debut was as an opener at city gardens for drama rama is that right that's the one yeah drama rama uh leave, leave yeah. it to what's what's his name at city gardens um randy randy <laughs> Yeah, want to open for want to yeah. open for drama? Hey, hey, hey buddy, want to open for drama? Rama? Hey, I got a spot open. I'll give exactly. you 150 bucks. That was yeah. it. That was it. Yeah, yeah. He he yeah. Uh, he had me play another show where I I opened for Ween when Ween were first starting to wow. go up a little bit. That's cool. So yeah, it was all weird stuff, and and I didn't mind it because you know I'll play for anybody anywhere. I love to play. So that's the yeah. spirit. That's kind of where it all started, and 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 up until maybe just before COVID hit. It, well, that's not true. I I went out. I got invited to to open up dates for uh, Rancid and Dropkick Murphys, uh, and um, God, the, the Selector on on they did the nice. from Boston to Berkeley thing, yeah, yeah. and they they invited me to go out and do like I think it was like two weeks of shows, and I said sure I'll do it, and so it was great because I the, the pressure wasn't on me. I just got up and played thirty minutes every night, and and it you know I had a great time, but. It was such a, uh, <laughs> it was such a, you know, I, I, I was in a bus and it was, you know, f good food every night and I got paid well. And it was such a spoiler that I was like, yeah. how am I going to get back in my old piece of shit van and, <laughs> and sleep in my van outside of a fucking, uh, you know, McDonald's so I can use the Wi-Fi? You know, how do I go back to doing that? You know, and, um, and that, and with then those that, guys again, I'm so sick. Of those well, guys. no, not with the band. I could always oh, do that, oh. but I, I'm talking about out by myself, you know, I'm missing oh, my okay. wife and my dogs oh, and cats. I, I see what you're saying. You're yeah, saying. I'm sorry when, when 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 things level off in in my solo acoustic <laughs> world right right when, when, yeah. yeah okay no i you know I, i'm i've always been up for jumping in the van with those guys you know but yeah. yeah you know i i'm most predominantly doing these tours just me you know so yeah, yeah. it's just uh I like it, but I also start to get to the point where I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm 50 at the time. I'm 55 years old. I'm getting into, I'm doing what I was doing when I was 20. You know, is this right? Is this good? You know? Well, I have it in my notes, you know, uh, you know, less hassle playing solo. And yeah, right. of course, of course I enjoy it. I, I haven't done it in a while. I mean, since, you know, COVID hit and the show yeah. success, I have a new film coming out, whatever, but yeah. we did the Drew Stone hit squad for a while. I loved it, man. I really, yeah. I really enjoyed it. The one thing, one thing is like, I'm not up there screaming my brains out every night. You know, it's like yeah. that I really enjoy because at this stage, when, when we do the, 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 the other thing, it is such a physical thing. It Absolutely. is so intense Absolutely. physically. 
it's just nice to get up there and play and I'm engaged with an instrument. I really enjoy it. You know, I'm looking yeah, forward to it. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And, 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 you know, like it's a nice, I still, you know, I, I, I don't know why, but I still love, uh, I still love the idea of getting up and singing hardcore and fast stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. I still really have a, a, a feel for it. But yeah, uh, physically, you know, uh, it's harder for me. I mean, on, on the last two seven seconds tours, you know, I got a torn meniscus. I, I tore a, I tore a calf muscle on stage, you know, I'm, I, and I'm like, I'm not a spring chicken. I can't, I'm not in the greatest yeah. fucking shape. I can't do the, what I used to be able to do, you know? So, yeah, so yeah. I don't have to do that with the acoustic guitar. <laughs> you, you know, I think for me, uh, as I've gotten older, I, I feel like with the hardcore stuff, I've learned to sort of utilize it as a sort of uh, to expose expose uh, or, or all sort of the pent up aggression and emotion and all yeah. this stuff. I enjoy, you know. I know, you know. I don't do that. You know, a lot of guys. You know, I don't want to mention any DC guys or anything like that. But they <laughs> sort of, I don't do that. You know, they're not interested in the hardcore thing. I enjoy doing it still at this age. Getting up there, I think in a certain way, I, I've learned to to sort of really use it, like in my life, as a yeah. sort of you know, exorcism for what's going on. I feel great after. I, I think that's like a great that. way of putting it. The exorcism yeah. thing. I think it's great. And, 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 and it's also, it's like you own it now, you know, for yeah. years of just trying to have a, get a, get a handle on, on this crazy life you're living. The last thing I thought about was how well I was doing as a singer or performer. It was like, Oh yeah, that's right. Now I got to get yeah. up and play for 30 minutes. Now I can enjoy it and I can appreciate I can appreciate why other people appreciate it back yeah. then. I didn't get it at all in any facet. So yeah, I agree with you. And, and I, I, you know, this tour coming up, it, it I, I'm, I, I, I'm scared shitless. I, I have no idea. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I, I'm now I'm having the dreams again where we're yeah, like, yeah. We're, we're getting ready to go on stage and we can't start the set because somebody can't, can't tune in or, you know, you have I'm, those dreams too. Oh, of course. Yeah. Everybody, you know, who does it right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they go away and now they're back because this tour is coming up and I'm, thinking about it and i'm like you yeah. know what if i get out there and i start you know you know shouting and i don't have any power anymore you know like what if i i have no you know I'm, all of this shit so it's 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 kind of exciting because it's like being in a, a new band again in, you know how's as close you, as i'm you, gonna get how's your hearing these days uh not the greatest i i'm i i do a lot of recording here i have a little studio here right. and i record my stuff and uh I, I'm always having a friend of mine who's like got a real keen ear. He's an engineer. Listen, because I'm like, am I am I on? Is it going okay? Like, I just got fitted for these things. Yeah, see that I got it. I got it. And I, I, and I, you know what? They're great. I know. Now, are those the inner monitors? Or mm -hmm. those are the things that are form fitted that you just wear to keep the kind of filter the sound out? They're literally hearing aids. You know? Okay. Okay. Like I've, I've lost. I've, I've lost uh, like 30% of my hearing oh, or something, okay. you okay. know? So I, I just, I don't hear certain things anymore. Yeah, and uh, yeah. after a couple years of it, um, I, I'm starting to wear them and, and enjoy them. I'm hearing things, you know, it's like, okay. I can't hear, you know, like it, it's, you know, it, it gets difficult when I'm in a conversation and I can't, hear, you know, what, yeah, what, what? I know. I know. Are you sucks, watching man. a, you're watching a movie or TV? I noticed that oh, with TV. I'll have yeah, to, yeah. I'll ask my wife. I'm like, I, yeah. what did you just say? Did I just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. All that symbol, those symbol for me, it, it's the symbol yeah. hits. I think that really just, kill yeah, me, man. yeah, for you sure. And, and I never wore ear earplugs when i was a kid i know you know, and, know. Uh, all those you know talk about assist you control you know like all those gigs and yeah and black yeah. flag and bad brains and absolutely and, and it's all, stupid you know, yeah, yeah <laughs> i i i saw i sort of i yeah. sort of you know but it's okay you know it, it's it's all it's all good i, I you know so yeah. let's um let's take let me take my final um sponsor break and let's come back and let's take questions from around the world yeah sounds great okay well, here we are. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live. Our guest today is Kevin Seconds. Get your questions ready. Uh, I saw a couple of them. Uh, Daniel, a couple of you guys, please repost them again. There's also a super chat. Um, if you have a burning desire question, you know, uh, take off your yarmulke, spend a couple bucks, and, and, and get a goddamn uh, super chat. And I, and, I, and I can say that, being that I'm Jewish. Um, we are sponsored by... New York Hardcore Comics, Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Chachos Tacos, Generation Records, and Organic Grill, who provided food yesterday at our event in New York City. Thank you very much, Vlad. It was awesome. Uh, Women in the Pit, 
Uh, thank you, um, Lori Dawn and Gina and everybody. We had a great event at Generation Records yesterday celebrating the holidays. Organic Grill is a vegan restaurant located in the East Village of New York City at 123 First Avenue. Featured in New York Magazine, New York Times, and Veg News. Their dishes have won numerous awards, including Best Veggie Burger. They make their own cheeses, sausages, and burger patties. And every dish on the menu can be made gluten-free. This year, they're celebrating their 21st anniversary, and they're all about having a great time while enjoying amazing, clean food. They have now fully reopened for business and look forward to seeing you. Get in touch with them. Order some great food at www.theorganicgrill.com. What's up, Devin? Come on now. DTFM Vinyl Distro is a record store that specializes in underground music. Located in the heart of Fargo, North Dakota's Industrial District, shop in person or in line at www.dtfmvinyldistro.com, where the motto is death to false metal. Uh, that said, uh, one more quick time. I want to shout out a couple of my new patrons uh, that, that are on board. Big patron shout out here to Andrew Bender, Johnny Rock, Sebastian Gargone, Scott Solidar. Eben Denton Walker and Marla Standing Owl. Thank you all for being a part of Patreon and for supporting this show. Seriously, I appreciate it. And if you are a patron, you get the book for free. If you're not a patron and you want to buy the book, buy it at www.stonefilmsnyc.com. It's $24.95. All this, all this shit's getting shipped out tomorrow. All right. So don't be shy. Let it fly. Buy the book. Um, grab that acoustic and play us a song. Eh. You know what? Not really. Maybe. We'll see. Um, what else? Ken Baker. Well, thanks, Ken. I appreciate it. Shout out to Vlad. Thank you, Lori. It was a fun event. Once again, I want to shout out all the gals, women in the pit. Um, great crew there. And they're doing great stuff within the hardcore scene. Um, post up some, some questions. I think I covered everything else. You know what? Let's announce another show while we're at it. Um, Sunday, February 27th is the Castle Heights reunion show. Castle Fights, as you remember. Um, Kevin Scandato Castle uh, is going to be on the show. And uh, wait, let me clear this stuff out. Get out. Everybody get out. Get out. All right. Sunday, February 27th, Kevin Castle Scandata will be on the show. It is the Castle Heights 20-year reunion. Make sure you check. We're going to have a bunch of special guests. This show hasn't even been announced. You hear it. You hear it here first, right? Uh, Sunday, February 20th, Mr. Mike Gernari from Madball. Come on now, is coming on the show. Talk about New York hardcore Mike Gernani, Madball, strength in numbers. Let's bring on another member of Madball and let's chop it up. Uh, that said, post some questions, please. Here we go. Who the... Huh. Nicholas, this is what you, you, you're posting on Patreon. All right. All right. That's cool. Here we go. Hey, I think I struck, I, I think, I think I struck a, uh, a nerve when I said, take off your yarmulke to, uh, Hey, did you see the trailer I sent you by the way? Uh, I, I saw that it came to, but I didn't get it. I didn't you gotta check it, it out. Yeah. 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 Y yeah. The trailer to my new film. I will, um, for sure. Yeah, you, you, I think you really appreciate it. Uh, he said, oh, okay, okay, just because you said take off your yarmulke. Big ups for having Kevin on, true legend. The crew has been one of my go-tos since 84. Oh, man, thank you. Nice. Yeah. I appreciate cool. that. Um, this is interesting. Uh, I don't know much about this. Kevin, can you tell us the backstory from your perspective when your bass player tried out for Metallica? Is that right? 
Yeah, Steve. Steve uh, tried out. He was uh, asked to. He was one of the bass players that was asked to show up and 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 try out. And uh, wow, he did. Yeah. Um, I I had mixed emotions. Part of me wanted wanted it to not happen because I'm like, well, then, <laughs> there goes my brother. But part of yeah. me was like, you know, fuck, that would have really been a cool thing for him, you know. And and uh, I think out of all the members of Seven Seconds, my brother, you know, he's an incredible bass. He's an incredible musician. He can play yep. any style of music and do it really well. And instead of working his ass off being this working class guy in Reno, he should be out touring with whoever he wants to, you know. Sure. And we he's know, doing. We all know a couple of those guys. You absolutely. Know? It's like, yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a sad story. And, and, yeah. and you know, I, I, I mean, it's not sad. He's doing what he wants to do. But, man, uh, it would have been funny having a brother in Metallica. What can I say? You know, <laughs> <laughs> how, how did that come about? Did they, was he on their radar screen or did someone recommend him like? Uh, well, you know, we, we played a show at the on Broadway in San Francisco and, uh, one of the opening bands was called, I can't remember what it was called, but, uh, J James Hetfield played drums in that band what? and yeah. <laughs> and, and I remember he was in Metallica, but it was an early stage and we met him and I, you know, I, we talked about it and he, you know, he, they loved a lot of the early hardcore, the thrash stuff, but, uh, Pusshead, the artist Pusshead was the one we, that, that su okay, called sure. Steve, I think. And yeah, yeah. he was, he was our the connection between that and, and. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We got good audience. Spastic, Spastic children. children. Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 That's good. Good. Good call. Jury yeah. Jury. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. They're out there. That's great. Yeah. Um, th this one's come up. I wanted to ask him. I'm glad somebody, uh, uh, Jorge from Colombia, uh, asked him about the shows that he filled in for drums for youth of today. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, I'm even on the Whoa. Wikipedia page as a former drummer. I I, I made it. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, awesome. So we set up, a, we the youth today wanted to come out and support the seven inch and it was their first trip out to the West coast. And so they, Ray called and he said, can you help us? And I was like, yeah. So we seven seconds set up a bunch of shows in California and we just put them on the bill with us. And, um, you know, uh, maybe a week prior to them flying out, they called me and said, Hey, our drummer left the band. Is there anybody that can play drums for us <laughs> when we get out there? And I, I, you know, I knew a couple of people, but they were, everybody was too young to go on the road or too, you know, whatever. So I wow. said, I said, well, I can play, you know, if it's a hardcore beat, I can play it. And they're like, all right, you're in. So That's then I was like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, stupid. So, so yeah, yeah. Uh, I played, I played the majority of it, and then Troy would fill in on the stuff that had more fills and stuff. And uh, we did the the two of us ended up being the, playing drums for him during that whole tour, and uh, it, wow. was, it was just kind of funny. Yeah, that, that's that's great. Uh, Andrew Vandenberg says, "What is your take on the tribute album on Reflections Records? Have you heard it?" I, I'm is that the one I think that's from like was that from Sweden or Holland or something there was a tribute if that's the one you're talking about it's uh fucking great yeah it was it was actually I, I was blown away and very moved by some of the versions of that uh there's also an all Reno uh a recent one that came out a bunch of Reno musicians got together and did a bunch of seven seconds covers and it's it's unheralded and nobody knows about it but it's in a it's a it's an amazing record wow. and, and some of the takes of uh, weird takes of some of our songs it's really neat but. is 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 you've been in sacramento i guess reno is is where you guys came out of do, yeah. what, do you still to this day is reno a destination on on a when you go out oh yeah tour, yo we got to play reno right oh yeah for sure reno uh, yeah. you know i still think i mean everybody in the band lives in reno. well that's not true bobby lives in uh, oregon now but uh we've we, we we were always a reno band we never claimed anything i i moved to sacramento in 88 uh, you know, Sacramento is my home. Uh, I, you right. know, but seven seconds was always a Reno band and we'd always play one once a year and it would be the big deal. You know, everybody would come out for it and, and stuff. Um, it, it's tough now because the circle jerks negative approach tour is going through Reno, Sacramento and Reno before we, we link up with them. And is so right? there, there are these, all, all these people are like, I can't wait to see you in Sacramento. Reno. I'm like, well, you're not going to see us on that tour, unfortunately. So I think we're going to try to do something, um, just so that we can, you know, because that was one of the things that we 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 talked about it is at least trying to do one more. We 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 always imagine like maybe we can go through and do one more in one New York show, LA show, you know, all the cities that we always got a yeah. lot of love from. You well, know? you're coming, you're coming to New York and playing on that tour. You're playing two Irving shows. Plaza. The first <laughs> yeah. show, Irving Plaza, yeah, the first show is sold out April 15, 16. I guess yeah. you're jumping, you're jumping on in Salt Lake City, right? And then yeah. Yep. It goes from there, Salt Lake City, Denver, Lawrence, Lawrence, Kansas, 
Yeah. Uh, so uh, the outhouse. Saint, Saint Louis. Oh boy. <laughs> I knew that would stop you. Know, that yeah, always, that always, on, that always stopped every musician <laughs> in their tracks. <laughs> they don't make them like that anymore. Right. Um, St. Louis, <laughs> Minneapolis, Chicago, Detroit, Buffalo, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, then up into Canada, Toronto, Montreal, Quebec, some, some pretty oh, higher ground in Burlington. I used yeah. to live, I used to live right there. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, I, I got, you know, I, I believe I got married and raised a kid in, in Vermont. Oh, nice. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah it was a couple of good, you know, was, I, you know, I released a band. I released a record on positive force from a Burlington band called Hollywood Indians. Oh, they wow. were from, Bur uh, there were two bands, a, a band called screaming broccoli who were kind of a new wavy pop huh. punk band and Hollywood Indians. And they're both from Vermont, uh, Burlington. Yeah. It's interesting. You know, the, the Burlington sort of scene, you know, it, yeah. it's like, they call it a city, but it's like, you know, it's like a town. And, right. uh, but you know, you know, it, it sort of lives a little bit in the sh shadow of like a fish came from there, you know, yeah. or so uh, Bernie, right? Bernie. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't miss, you know, no disrespect to anyone in Vermont, but boy, I'm glad I'm back <laughs> in New York city. Uh, and then, yeah, you're going to Bur Philly, Boston, couple in New York, DC, Asheville. Oh, this is great. Atlanta, New Orleans, and then Texas, Texas, Texas. And the last show is at the Palladium in Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be the big one. Yeah. yeah I, I, it's, it's, it's covering all the, uh, you know, most of the places. Uh, I know we just got at Colorado Springs just got added. Um, and there's, I think there's talk of, I think on days off circle jerk days off, I think us and negative approach are going to try to go out and do our own shows, um, together on a couple dates. So play yeah. some, play some of the smaller clubs. Um, yeah, I'm terrified. Samuel Blint, did Seven Seconds play the Olympic Auditorium in 84? Absolutely. Yeah, in fact, yeah. the cover of the crew was a photo taken from that show. At at that time, that that was the biggest – That was there were 5,000 people. That was the biggest crowd we ever played in front of. And uh, was that, that was also – Was that the one that um, – did SSD play that? No, they, they, no, did, no. they did play Olympic. We played yeah. uh, with – uk subs and tsol yeah. right and uh i think battalion of saints and it, and it was a uh, um it was the first night we we introduced 90 99 red balloons and we we mm. thought that the the there, there was a pretty fierce skinhead scene down there so we thought the skinheads were gonna fucking hate it and they ended <laughs> up the, i i'll never forget looking out and seeing these big brawling motherfuckers out there like dancing to 99 <laughs> <laughs> are we gonna are we gonna get, are we gonna get trounced for 99 love balloons I, i'm you know? telling you i love the song and when i when i first talked to the guys about doing it i said we should just do it and we just punk it out and they were like i don't know man you know that because you know you were around back then now you, yeah. you you know you, you never really quite knew what sense of humor people had or yeah, it went yeah, sense of yeah. fun people had so yeah we, we we introduced it that night and the whole fucking place went nuts so we we're like all right i guess we gotta we i guess we did it you know we did all right <laughs> you, is that still in the set oh yeah of course yeah if yeah. we don't do it people get upset yeah it's like we've yeah. not done it and people are like you didn't do fucking 99 red balloons what's wrong with you <laughs> drag that drag that ball and chain around with <laughs> <laughs> uh juratory 13 any memories from playing rebellion in black Cool. awesome gig by the way oh, yeah but every seven seconds gig i've seen of them was yeah rebellion festival is one of my favorite festivals and and i love blackpool it's just such a weird cool old city uh that whole scene is that's uh outside of maybe chicago that's the only time in my memory where i remember being surrounded by people that are older at my age and older nowadays it's wow. more common sure. but but back sure. then i go to yeah. go to rebellion festival and see these like 70 year old punk rockers that are just like yeah you know falling apart and they're still get they got their leather jacket i love that yeah. festival it's great it's one of my favorites yeah that that I, i've never been there but everybody raves about it it's know? great yeah the last yeah. time we were there actually um i think agnostic front played and I, the last time i remember we i got to hang out with Vinny, and i hadn't seen Vinny in a while but yeah that uh, and I've done some solo, uh, played the solo stage on there uh, a couple times. We, we just played Vinny Stigma's birthday bash like two weeks ago. Excellent. It, yeah. It was great. It, it was, it was, it was, it was, and we, you know, it, it was awesome. I, um, love that, I love that he's here, man. I love that he's yeah, here yeah. with us. You know? Our uh, good friend and supporter, Astoria Lou, asks, what prompted putting on the black eye paint in the early days, a la the NFL style? Uh, you know what? That was my uh, silly uh, attempt to try to start a thing in our scene that would make mm. us stand out when because we mm. were going to a lot of shows in in san francisco and sacramento and back then there was almost a tribal feel of like sure. like when you we were in san francisco 
when the crazy fucking Huntington, ki- uh, Huntington Beach, Orange County kids would come up for shows. Hmm. They had the style, you know, you saw the bandanas on the boots right. and the fucking, right, you know, right, right. and everybody had their style. And I always thought, oh, and, and we macked a lot of that too, but I always thought let's, let's have a Reno thing. So m- in my own, you know, a uh, naive way, I said, I- I'm going to put the black under the eyes. A couple other kids in Reno did. And then it kind of it started out this thing so that you knew that we were from Reno. It, it was a real silly juvenile thing, but uh, a lot of people, it, it was kind of a turnoff for a lot of punk people because they thought it was a jock thing and i'm like i'm i'm like the antithesis i'm the most not jock jock dude right yeah right i mean you know so yeah um this is i want to touch on this Uh, michelle who was on the show uh earlier the uh, thanks to all the years here's to many more to come keep thrashing kevin it was nice talking to you today to warp tour 97 cheers with root beers let's touch on the let's let's touch on the warp tour because uh you you've you did the warp tour a couple of times right and yeah. and and um from what i understand you know at first you you weren't interested they asked you you didn't want to do it and then and then give us a little bit of the backstory of how you sort of finally said okay let's do it and how that worked out for you uh when, when i first when i first started hearing about the warp tour i thought it was great because it was it was still a little more punk and hard they had hardcore bands uh my wife and i went to go to a warp tour uh in san francisco and and uh we went and I, I'll never forget going this. I wanted to go see the descendants and they were playing on the smallest stage. And I remember feeling so fucking pissed at that. I was like, these guys have been at it since 70. Right. Like they're one of the best. This is, know. this is, this is an injustice. Yeah. They, they were killing it. They didn't give a shit. And there weren't even that many people watching them. It was like, yeah, I think, yeah. I think one of the bigger, I think Pennywise was playing at the main stage and everybody yeah, was there. Yeah, right. There you but go. I, I, they didn't care. They were happy, but I was pissed for them. And I, and I yeah. just held this grudge against Warped Tour for a while. And I said, sure. fuck this place. And so we'd get asked and I was like, ah, it's just commercial bullshit. And I, I don't, you know, it's too tight yeah. in with comp you who and all these companies and i'm like i don't want to i don't want to have anything so we avoided it and then finally it was like we got asked again and it was like look here's who's playing and you know be nice to do it and our booking agent margie said you know let's let's give it a shot so we said all right you know what it'll give us a chance to play in front of a lot of people we weren't able to go out and tour on our own that year for you know i said let's just do it we get in a van and we get to go hang out with some friends and um, we ended up having a great time. We, we shared a bus with H2O and, and, uh, you know, we agnostic front jumped on, um, you know, avail were on Luna chicks were on like friends of ours or bands that we love. That was a good, on. that was a good, that was a good, uh, warp tour. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that, that was a good one. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that we were, we were mostly, we did the main stage a couple of times, but we were mostly on this bus stage, which we ended up calling the hardcore stage because it was like, where all the hardcore bands kind of got relegated to, you know? Yeah. And we, we, every night, every day when we played that bus stage, it was always a packed. It was just great. It was a little smaller and, you know, in terms of the space it was at. And I just thought that that's where we, we really shine. We'd get out. We, they'd tell us, okay, you're on main stage today. And, and it, it was like, all right, I guess that's cool. But it was never the same feel, you know, it was like, yeah, okay, we're playing in front of more people, but we really, the bus stage was like our stage. So yeah. I was like, yeah, I've, I've, I learned at a certain point that <clears throat> some, it's a lot of, most of the time it's better not playing the big stage. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like you're up on the big stage. It's, it's sort of like you there's <laughs> a little disconnect there. It's, yeah. Sometimes at first, it, at first yeah. you kind of want to be asked to play the, and then you're like, yeah. why didn't we, why didn't we want to play the main stage? <laughs> Just like, yeah. You know, um, Brian asks, Kevin, you have a ritual where you shave your head when you go through something life changing. When do you think the next haircut is coming? <laughs> also, if you could give yourself, if you could give yourself advice 30 years ago, what would it be? That's very, that's a good question, Brian. Yeah, Thank it you. is a great question. Yeah, very good question, brother. Thank wow. You. Yeah. I, 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 that's funny. I wasn't, I'm not aware that I do that, but I, maybe I do oh. do that. It's, it's kind of <laughs> funny. And and I've had a few emails. I'll show, tell me, are you going to cut the hair before the tour? I'm like, I don't know. I don't right. think about it that much. Uh, the advice I would give myself is, is to, 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 I, I would have flossed my teeth better. I, you know, I, I just didn't, I, I wasn't protecting them. And I also didn't know that I was going to, you know, get them bashed out with microphones and stuff but um you know just take care i think i would have taken care of my health better like i would have just been more you know uh mindful of like the fact that i'm not going to have the same <laughs> as you show the picture of me but yeah, mindful of of having a bad back or you know uh 
being injured. I, it's easier for me to get hurt now more than I, than I yeah. did when I was obviously 20. Um, but also it, it, really super, super uh, basic state things like, like ear, uh, earplugs and that kind of yeah. stuff. Um, as far as, is, 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 is anything else? Cause you know, like, I, I feel like I, you know, uh, I like your, your comment on the regret thing. You know, I, I don't, I, I embrace my regrets. I don't, I'm yeah. not, I don't shy away from them because that's a part of how we, we grow and evolve, you know, and, yeah. uh, I, and I'm all right with it. You know, I, I, I never claim to be anytime anybody ever said, Oh, you know, they're trying to be holier than thou. It's like, you have no idea what you're talking about. You don't know how flawed and fucked up we are as, as a, as a band of people, you know? So I'm yeah. all right with it. I, I mean, and, and let me rephrase, I'm going to, I'm going to sort of uh, rephrase this a little bit. Um, you influenced many bands and I don't, need to lay them out here but as sort of uh the 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 the, the father of this uh i mean what's the feeling when you see bands uh, come along and you and, and you can see the direct lineage there how does that make you feel um you know i well as far as gorilla biscuits biscuits goes i love them i love them as a band yeah. i love them as people um i I, I feel that way about like the, the youth of today guys too. Like I, I feel uh, that if, you know, I've heard they've given us shout outs on stage and said that they're influences and I never hear the influences. I, I'm never good at that. Like right. if you if, <laughs> so people go, dude, that guy's smacking your style. I listen. And I'm like, I don't hear it. So I don't, yeah, you know, right. <laughs> but as, as far as being in, influential, you know, it, to, to, if it's just people, great people that have gone on to do great things, I'm proud as hell. And, yeah. and I don't take, I'm not going to take, uh, I, I'm not arrogant enough to go, well, you know, good job there. But uh, I love being attached to something that is considered uh, a good thing and a positive thing. And uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm happy. I'm glad we did, we did, did it the way we did it and we're doing it the way we do it now, you know? Good. And, and it's, it's, it's very deserving that, you know, that you guys get to go out you know, that Keith and them pull it back together and that you get to go out with them and, and at yeah. least get treated with some respect and play some nice shows and some nice yeah, venues. For yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and we probably, you know, uh, we, we got offers throughout the years, the last few years and to go and do festivals and go out yeah. with some big bands. And, and it's always like, uh, we're always uh, grateful to anybody that asks us to do stuff, but, uh, or, or even Mar Margie, our booking agent would say, you know, do you guys want to do some club shows? And, and that's where we love playing. I mean, a club, sure. I'll never sure. get sick of that. A packed, sweaty, all ages <laughs> show is always the best thing ever. But, yeah. um, yeah, the, you know, I, 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 this is a perfect situation because it's like it's not the emphasis is, isn't on us going out and trying to put yeah. out a new record or anything like yeah. that. And, and, and believe me, we ha we if we wanted to put out a record, I write like an idiot. I write constantly. So um, it's not laziness. It's just um, we didn't expect to be doing this. And all of a sudden it was like, hey, it presented itself. And it's like this seems like the best situation because of circle jerks and negative approach, you know. So, yeah, uh, that, that, that makes uh that makes sense. It will um, be nice to be on a tour where I'm not the oldest, by the way, too. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keith's Keith's probably got you by, you know, a couple years, at least a couple, couple, <laughs> year, couple years. Um, I want to start wrapping it up, but I, I, I you know, I do want to ask you about, um, uh, you know, I know you opened a coffee, a coffee house uh, with your wife at a certain point. Right. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and I think in a couple of locations, right. You were sort yeah. of, yeah, uh, is that something that that you're looking to sort of keep do again in the future? Or was uh, good memories from that uh, experience? Yeah. Uh, it, it was the most work that I've had to put in <laughs> something that wasn't music related in, 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 uh, and, 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 and it, and it changed, uh, my wife and I learned a lot about how it affected us as a couple. And, you know, sure. we, cause we were there 14 hours a day and we were sure. bosses and, but, uh, the experience was great because we weren't just a coffee house. It was a coffee house with live music and, and, uh, art. And, and our, our thing was, is that I love where I live. I love Sacramento. I'm, I, I'm very embedded into the culture the art Sac music town. scene here. Yeah. I yeah. love it. And, 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 and I'm happy, you know, people shit on sack, but I love living here and there's a yeah. really, there's a, there's a great, it's a good place. Um, but, uh, uh, it, it really did put a lot of it. It taxed our relationship to great. We'd go home at night and we just wouldn't have anything to say, you know, it was be like, we're just, you know, so it, we, we had to learn how to become business people. And, uh, I, 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 
the funniest thing is, is I'm always happy when I hear about people that from sort of our subculture that start their own businesses and, yeah. or go on to do things because I'm like, it's going to be run by good people. They're going to do yeah. it with, a, in my mind, they're doing it for the right reasons. Right. And I think we did. Um, we talk about it. Like, like, I don't think in Sacramento, I don't think we could pull it off. Our, we, 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 we had a lot of success with the first two because it was the time for it. You know, sure. I don't know. Sacramento's changed a lot now. And so yeah. I don't know that it would, it, 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 there would be a place for that kind of place, you know, but it was sort and, of the tail end of the sort of what used to be the old coffee arts coffee house scene here in Sacramento, you know? Sure. And especially after the zombie pandemic, the zombie apocalypse, yeah. I think, I think that the, the pieces on the board are going to be changed even more. I mean, it, it, you could see, I mean, yeah. Um, so the true love coffee house is different than the riving, uh, the riving loom arts in Sacramento, right? Yeah. Yeah. Two, and, and what's the, and explain riving, riving, riving loom arts <laughs> was like an art gallery performance space. Correct. Yeah. Okay. I got yeah. it. Yeah. And I, that was, that was something I had thought about just on my own. Um, Allison was like, yeah, that sounds cool. But it was something I wanted to do. And I, I got a financial, I was able to, I knew that I could cover it for a year and I was like, I'm going to open it and for a year. And if I, I, I'm not expecting great success, but if I can do uh, make a place where young artists and, um, Sing, singer songwriters can come and have sure. a place then and we had a great run for uh well i'm sitting in this the 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 most recent location but it's become more of a my own little workspace now because yeah. i realized about a, two years into it that i'm like i really don't want to be around that this many people at any given time you know if i want to yeah. do it i want to go walk away from it and go into somebody else's universe i don't want it to be mine <laughs> you know so it's a yeah, lot of it, work it, absolutely and, and you know i you know i i've, I've learned that you know once a month, we you know we do this uh, Sunday matinee show at the Bowery, and it's free, and it's all ages, you know. And I got to be like a promoter. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. It's exhausting, man. You yeah. know, it's like I'm just going from one, you know, pro, you know. <laughs> we need. Hey, can we get some water before we go on stage? Yeah. To, there's a fight upstairs. To you know, and it's just yeah. It's sort of it's after a while, it's not that much fun. I agree. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, you, you take yeah. the good parts, but there's a lot of stuff that you're like, oh man, I've already done all this stuff too much, you know? Like, yeah. I, I mean, people say yeah. that all the time, like, well, you should start doing shows somewhere. And I'm like, I don't want to, I've done that. Yeah, no, I've been a booker. That, I've been a promoter. I've been the door guy. I've been the sound guy. I've been all of them at the same time. I don't want to, yeah. I don't need to prove myself in that respect, you know? Well, well also <laughs> here in New York, I could say that, you know, it's a hardcore thing. So inevitably it's going to collapse in, 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 in a haze of violence and hatred. Yeah. So having that over your head all the time. Right. Yeah. I know, man. But, I know, you know, but it's cool. You know, we, we, yeah. we, we, we march on. Oh, Letty says, Drew is more than a promoter. He's also the bouncer, the cop, the mod boss, the mob boss role. Right. To one. You got to yeah. be, though. You got to be. That's why, Lenny, that's why I only do it once a month because it's friggin' exhausting. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. Harold Angel says, Hey, Kev, just want to say thanks again for everything. Saw you last playing acoustic show with Steve Soto in Fullerton. Mm, Both yeah. of you guys gave me your set lists and you signed yours to my best friend. We walk together and rock together. Rest in peace, Soto. Wow. Yeah, man. That's yeah. heartfelt. That's nice, man. Thank you, Harold. Yeah, the uh, Soto, Steve Soto is a. Uh, uh, there's this gigantic hole in my mm. my being uh, that I'll never, I'll never patch up. He's he was just a fucking great person, and we, uh, I, 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 we, we became friends years and years back, but we really didn't get to hang out and and work together until the last couple years of his life. And it was yeah. uh, my favorite touring. Uh, and he, and he, we talked about this a lot. Like we both love being in our bands, our respective mm -hmm. bands, but uh, the kind of tour we got to do where it was just he and I in a van driving across the country, trading stories and then get on stage. Awesome. And, dude, it was like, uh, I, I've awesome. never, I've never, I've ne I'll never have that kind of experience. I don't uh, think so. Yeah. That, that's, Good man. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Thank you, Harold. Our boy Kevin Heggs, uh, Rampage, A7 Rampage Mosh Crew represents, says, Kevin, what was the scariest show you played? Unexpected Chaos? Uh, it was uh, it was in Florida. Uh, it was, I'll tell you exactly. It was Ooh, 1988. Say no more. It was in yeah. Florida. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was 19, yeah. probably 1988, uh, 1987, um, Orlando, Florida, 
probably about 800 people, about 500 were white power skinheads that just Ooh. were looking for blood and, and had, had called to threaten me and uh, the band and said, if we played certain songs that we were going to get fucking killed that night on oh. top of that, there were the law enforcement stood on the side of the stage and monitored us. They took us aside and said, if you utter any profanities, uh, if you say anything that we consider riotous, uh, your equipment will be impounded. You oh. will get arrested. So we have fucking boneheads that are out in the crowd, sig hiling us, uh, beating up kids that were there legitimately to sing with and play with us. And then we have the cops standing on the side of the stage. It was probably the most unpunk rock, uncool show I've ever. Uh, and it, it literally that uh, tour, I went home thinking, I just don't even want to do this anymore because we can't win this. We can't win this fight or just now we are just creating music that is the background for stupidity you know and yeah yeah that would that's, be it that, that, that's on orlando huh yeah uh, but just just so to make clear we've had great shows since yeah, in orlando yeah, sure. and or i don't want i you know i'm not a huge fan of florida as a state but uh we've had amazing shows in florida so yeah. uh, you know i don't want to shit on florida yeah well things have 80 that was a long time ago yeah already, it was a know? tough it was a tough year a year uh it's nationwide. I mean, we here yeah. in Sacramento, we had a, an issue with that and I yeah. couldn't go to shows. I, uh, our guitar player got a, you know, a fucking, uh, hole the size and blown in the back of his truck because the, some crazy politics. And it was like, uh, it was a sketchy time to be here. I, you know, I, I was going back to New York to live with my girlfriend and I was, I felt safe in New York city out here. I was, I didn't feel, it's, I, it's, you know, it's crazy when you feel safer in New York city, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, you know, you know, I want to ask just, just for, for, uh, RS 70, who's our resident graffiti, uh, w growing up in, in Reno w w and, and was there a, a graffiti scene there? Was that part of the culture? We were it. We we got we got hooked to the, we got tipped to the. Um, I think it was through the movies like uh, Beat Street and you know yeah, the early sure. hip hop movies. Uh, the graffiti culture was something that we just started hearing about, and I was enamored of it. I thought it was like the greatest thing. Yeah. So we we fancied ourselves graffiti artists, but it was really just us throwing seven seconds, you know, logos yeah, and yeah. shit like that. But yeah, we got into it. I, I think there nowadays there's much more of it. It's much more legit. Um, but back then it was like, you know, you'd see the Warriors movie and you'd go, man, I want to, I want to do that. <laughs> you know, it's sure. Like, it's really corny stuff, you know? Yeah. You know, I live, I, speaking of the Warriors movie, I live right on Riverside Park, which is where the baseball furies, you yeah. know, where, they, where they had, I literally, but, after I do my show, I eat dinner, you know, I'll go out to get exercise. I walk right into the park, right right where they had that bat. i live right oh there. that's amazing wow <laughs> yeah yeah boy boy that that's... movie really said you know if you're a west coast kid sure and you've never been to that. new york yeah. that yeah. that movie that set a of a, a tone you know like you, because you we would walk around our little safe cute neighborhood and go you know we got to bop our way back to northeast Sac you know like joking around <laughs> but it, it 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 conjured up this this idea of what new york was like any yeah. any movie back then would and so when, by the sure. time we got out there we were just like oh my god what are we gonna you know and yeah we're gonna have anyway. to we're gonna have to like fight just like <laughs> just for, just for a meal we're gonna have to battle exactly to the death, you know <laughs> and then you show up at cbgb's and it's like vinnie's thing was like hey I will that see and, and and I'll never uh, that'll always be one of the fondest things that I'll ever hold uh, sure. memory wise is that you go to this city that's just got such a reputation for being like the hardest the darkest the you know junkies and you know punk yeah. rockers and, and with pit bulls and you know and you go there and everybody that you meet all that stuff's all there but you go everybody you meet is yeah. like you know, we're just happy you made it here. You know, yeah. Where do we go? Oh, I'll show you where the best you know deli is or whatever. I, I, everything was wonderful and 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 friendly and fun and and uh, I'll you know I'll always have a when 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 certain West Coast uh, political types would try to bum us on people that we'd already met that lived out in yeah. New York and try to sour sure. us. I'm like, you know, how about this? How about you meet them and hang out with them and get to know them and stop trying to shit on them. You're, you're basing this all on, on the fact that somebody had an American flag behind their set. You know what I mean? Like really stupid shit that, that yeah. never made sense to me. So yeah, sure. I'm glad. And, we it's, see, and in a certain regard, it's almost worse now with the internet, you know, how like, Oh yeah. Everybody, everybody has this venomous, hateful platform yeah. that they expose from constantly and it's yeah it's bizarre it's almost like 
I feel like there needs you, you need to like earn certain credit units to be able to sort of get a platform like that. Instead, I agree. You just have people just, oh man, it's just it's, yeah. It's Can you imagine if the New York the the hard not New York but just the hardcore scene in general had sort of had to get it start with social media the way it it would never it wouldn't have turned it wouldn't have gone in 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 the way that it did because everything was so organic and so you had to be hungry for something you nowadays yeah, yeah. i don't know that you have to be you know i mean i think there are hungry people for stuff <laughs> how about uh, eric van butt says kevin which artist band do you want to work with is there anybody you've worked with so many people you've you, you've you know is, is there anybody that know. You, you know that really man i'd love to do something with that guy to, or play I mean, you've played with everybody. Yeah, I mean, uh, n now that Availer Availer kind of doing shows, I I'd love to do more shows with the Veil. I mm -hmm. I love that band so much. Uh, Swing and Utters, you know, I we, I we, I know we've played on shows together, and and I've always loved them. But I over the last few years, I've really I did a little tour with them, and I've really gone back and listened. To, I don't know, they're they're not like super big name bands, but just bands that I think are just they've been at it and they work so hard and they've been great and they've contributed in such a great way. Yeah. And I'm inspired by it, which I, I gotta admit, I'm old and jaded. I don't, you know, I'm not like I used to be where I would just go buy any record just because it looked cool or I heard somebody say, you know, now I'm a little pickier with what I buy. So uh, I can't think anybody uh, okay. of anybody really like you know we yeah. like you said we've played with just about everybody. So. Here, here's here's a, here's a personal. Uh, this is this is this is one of being, you know, acoustic guitar playing wise. Um, inspirations. I know we talked about Will, Woody Guthrie a little yeah. bit, but but like I know this is a different animal. Like you know, people ask you, you know who inspires me hard. Okay, but but different people inspire me as as far as sort of solo acoustic. Anybody come to mind? Um, yeah, I mean, in terms of like, uh, God, there's so many people I, um, sorry, I, this, something popped up real quick. Um, I think in terms of, um, <laughs> I, I, and I, I don't know if a lot of people know who he is, uh, Richie Havens, who was like, oh, come uh, on, bro, of course, you know, like yeah. he, uh, if you just watch, I'll, I'll just, just watch like the, his snippet of opening the Woodstock thing. And I know this is fucking yeah. hippie dippy shit, yeah. but if you watch what he does and the way he plays and the yeah. sweat that's pouring out, and then you find out that he made up a song because they told him you got to go out and play. Like we need you to keep playing like the so-and-so hadn't shown up yet. And he's just out there pouring it. And, and like, I watch that probably once a week just because yeah. I'm like, I, I I'll never, I'll never be able to ooze that much real, you know, but his style and that kind of a, he, he it almost sounds like he's playing drums with his hands yeah. on the acoustic guitar. Freedom. Um, freedom. Free, there you go. Yeah. Dumb talents. Um, I think, yeah. the, I think the deal was that, he played first. Yeah. I think that the, the, he, there was actually so many people and the opening the first band that was scheduled to play yeah. wasn't there yet. And they, they kind of put him on as a pre as a, as the prelude to the show. And wouldn't you know it, they filmed it and yeah. it ended up being the centerpiece of one of the centerpieces of the That's Woodstock crazy. film and launched a career for him over it. it. Cr it's crazy. And uh, it was just great stuff. Simple, made me... as, the, as your man Dylan would say, blame it all on a simple twist of fate. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah. But yeah. I, I, you know, uh, yeah, I, Johnny Cash, I, you know, his, his, yeah, his, his sure. style always sound like a fucking train to me. You know, just sure, that whole, sure. the ticket, ticket, ticket. Uh, I, I think in, in just indirectly, I've, I've it, from hearing those songs, when you play an acoustic guitar, you know, when you're playing electric, there's a certain, a rhythmic thing that you, you lock into with the acoustic and it's because i don't play with anybody i always um i really can't play my acoustic sets with a drummer because i've just gotten so used to playing making my own weird rhythm sure. on their thing so um anybody that's that does that, that's kind of has that rhythmic uh that that pattern is is has always been a big in, inspiration to me um cool yeah well hey I want to thank you for coming on the show. It was it was really an honor, man. I really enjoyed. Thank it. you, dude. Yeah, you're great. Yeah. I I love your show. You're you're thank amazing, you. and and uh, I just I'm glad you're doing what you're doing, and and uh, thanks to every you know thanks to everybody for everything, all the years of support, and just for being here with us. And thank you. I appreciate you having me on. I do it because I love it, man. Which and, yeah, and and, and 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 you know I I know you do as well. Anybody you want to shout out on the way out? Any sponsors or anything coming up or the wife? <laughs> well, anything? Uh, the wife, the kids, anything? Uh, you know, my wife, Allison, I, always, because she's just the greatest human being uh, that I've ever met. And, uh, um, 
Yeah, I can't think of it. You know, I, I, okay. I, I'm, I'm actually really thrilled that we'll get to run into a lot of you guys on this tour. And a lot of people are like, we're going to come up. And I, I'm telling everybody, please find me and walk up because that is still to this day part of my the social aspect really is a big part of my sure. thing. I, I do love it. And and we've we've maintained longtime relation friendships over the years because of that. So, yeah, come up, say hi. And uh, I hope to see everybody out That's- there. That's some old school hardcore shit right there. Right. It's like, no, no, it is. I, I say the yeah. same thing, man. It's like you're coming to the show. Find me. Say, say hello to me. You know, so you, you know, like connect with me. So I, you know, I see your face and know who you are. Don't just come to the show. It's find me. Come say hello. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Like that, that's that's that's. And, and here's the tour for those of you that that have been living under a rock. Uh, you know, seven seconds or are going out with the circle jerks and. And uh, playing a couple of shows with, uh, I think, is are, are you are you is negative approach on the shows you're doing? Negative approach is on all of them. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I'm sorry, they're not doing the Canadian. Uh, they, I can't. I don't think they can get it into Canada for some uh, d- possibly dubious reason. But yeah, the. Uh, but you do. The, but the one. But I see the ones you're doing is is you and negative approach. Correct. Yeah, and then the bouncing souls join up on that very that tail end that last show. Oh, I see. Me, that last yeah. show in Hollywood. Yeah. I see. Cool. Munici- I think right now uh, it's, it's uh, municipal, municipal waste, and yeah, yeah. I think they just they just played Florida, as a matter of fact. You're right. Yeah. I, I think I think that's that's going down as yep. well. All right, man. Well, listen, I'll see you when you're in New York. And, all right, man. And all Thank the, you. All, all the best to you. Thank you so much. All right, dude. Take care, all brother. Right, take care. All right. all right. Well, there you have it. Great show. Stick that in your pipe and smoke it. Matt Gray, you still out there? And through buddy i'm just going show, through com- huh? uh, excellent i was just going through comic books <laughs> <laughs> listening to the whole show that was great awesome show. man yeah that's for me personally i think that show could go like five hours i could listen to him all day because i'm obviously he's a legend to me and i'll say it and i don't you know what i mean yeah you know it was an honor you know. to have him on uh he's a guy that i can relate to you know uh certain guests come on and and I feel, you know, very much connected to them uh, just, you know, because of, you know, my age and, and, you know, he came up in the, fr- I'm a first wave American hardcore dude. So we see a lot of mutual friends, a lot, you know, so it was, uh, it, it was really, it was really great to have him on, you know, so I'm pretty stoked for that. Show cause I'm coming to New York for that show, of course. Are you? Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh. Matt of war. That, yeah. The hardcore shadow books is Matt of war. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I mean, well, yeah, that, circle jerks seven seconds. It's going to be like I saw him at City Gardens. So, you know yeah. what I mean? It's pretty yeah. much, you know, without Vampire Lesbos. But I'll take negative approach over Vampire, Vampire Lesbos. I think, any day. I think they fit Matt, Vampire Lesbos. I think where they say they were from. I think someone. They, oh, they, I don't I know. Forgot. No, they said I, in the, in I don't the know chat room. They, oh, okay. Cat, not Canada. Somebody said, yeah, but but yeah. I'm gonna That's go look cool. them up. Right on. How many how many drum lessons lessons do you have tomorrow? We have 11. 11 tomorrow. Yeah. I have 38 <laughs> students and I just got three more phone calls. I, I can't fit them. It's, it's, do, do, they come to, do they, do they come to you? No, I, I'm, I do a couple online. Spokane. And then, um, the Vampire Lesbos are from Spokane, Washington. Oh, yeah, okay. Thanks, gotcha. Lenny. Thanks, Emmanuel. Thanks, Lenny. Yeah. But yeah. Um, I teach at two different schools and then I do online. So it's a hmm. lot. Yeah, yeah. I'll have 11 tomorrow, 10 on Tuesday. All right. Say hi to Becky and, and, and Anakin for me, man. And, I, and I'll see you at rehearsal soon. Much love. All right. Take care. All right. Take care. Well, there you go. What a great show. And I'm very fortunate to be able to do this. And thank you for supporting me. This is the New York Hardcore Chronicles Live, sp- sponsored by New York Hardcore Comics, The Organic Grill, The Texas Silver Rush, Chain Reaction Records and Skateboards, DTFM Vinyl Distro, Chacho's Tacos, And Generation Records, just want to remind everybody that next up is Mike Bromberg, a.k.a. Mike Bullshit from back in the day. That's this Wednesday. And then we're going to have, then of course, it's the holiday. And then we're going to be doing the holiday show on Sunday with Hoya and some very special guests, 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 guests. We're going to march a whole bunch of people through for the holiday show. So get ready. All right.
I don't want to give up any names, but a couple of real bangers are coming through. Yes, Larry Kelly. Uh, thank everyone. Merry Christmas. Um, what's with the hat, dog? I always wear a hat. What are you talking about? Is this one somewhat different? It was going to be this one. It was going to be this one, but I went with this one. So, listen. You know, I don't want to get into. I don't want to. I, I don't want to announce the guests yet. Uh, we're still putting it together. But here's a couple of cl here's a clue. Hoya Rock is co-sponsoring. Uh, is co-hosting the show, and you know who he's connected with. So it's going to be a couple of people from that camp. Um, that said, you know, um, Scott Helen, thank you uh, for yesterday. You came down from New Paul's and played two great sets at Generation Records as part of our holiday uh, get together. Um, love what you're doing with solo your solo acoustic stuff. Gajewski, thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Um, what else? Will it be Madonna? Yes, Madonna's coming on the show. <laughs> uh yeah we got your friend mike bullshit yep it should be interesting yeah he was Lori. yesterday was cool you know it's crazy here in new york because we're kind of slipping back into darkness here and you know less and less people are coming out it's crazy you know yeah you like that cd yeah it's great um so shout out to P and G's at SUNY New Paul's. Okay. What's up, Chris? Great show, fellas. Happy holidays and new year to everyone. Your fire is murder. Yeah, man. Fire is murder. Great band with Steve Gallo and Chris. Great new band. Go check them out. Um, Michelle Monona, thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks to everyone for the kind words today. Thank you, Drew and Steve. Happy holidays. And made the new year be better than the last two. Yeah. I got to say, like, the pandemic, the zombie apocalypse has been pretty good to me. I started this show and, I'm, I'm, yeah, New York's looking a little apocalyptic, you know? A little apocalyptic again. And, yo, if you haven't, if you haven't bought the book, here it is again. www.stonefilmsnyc.com. All right. You will love this book. I will sign it for you and and all that. And all everybody's orders are in the mail or going out tomorrow. Ack, Ack, your, uh, yeah, your book. I think your book, your book either went out or it's going out tomorrow. So signed and everything. Scott, Scott Travis, a little late to the party, bro. Please ask Kevin Seconds if they will ever remaster the drop acid tapes or allow us to... Bro, where were you when we were doing the friggin' show, dude? Come on, man. You know? Gotta watch the show when the show's happening. <laughs> All right? You know? Let me see. Um, hey, Volt, you gotta help. Thanks for your help. We got the big... You know, we got the big Rick Thorne show coming up. And uh, I know you're excited about that, being a BMX enthusiast. Thanks for your help so far. You know, we got legend, the legend Rick Thorne coming on the show. So we're excited about that. Um, this is going to be cool. So, and thanks for your help with that. Um, let's get apocalyptic. Yeah, absolutely. Um, all right. What do you say we go, uh, for those? Oh, it was a good show, Scott. But yeah, can't ask him. He's gone. All right. That said, let me clear everything away so we can have a big, a big, uh, goodbye finale. There you go. What do you know? There you go. All right. Yeah, Rick Thorne, good dude, hardcore dude, you know. Oh, do, do we want to do five minutes of great get of who you want? Okay, by popular demand, who do you want? Let's do it. Who do you want to see on the show? Let's get crazy. I just announced 20 shows, but 
Thank you, Spaghetti. Appreciate it. Good to know you're out there. Who do you want to see on the show? Post up. Let's go. Randy. Yeah. Randy from City Gardens, right? You know what? Let me write that down. We, got it. we should do Randy from City Gardens. Um, Gordo, does, how's Gordo's English? I, I, I don't know. Gordo's a legend. Gordo would be good. I don't know how, how his English is. Uh, um, we talked about, we talked about Joan. Joni would be great on the show. Um, I haven't gone around to asking, uh, her people, but Joan Jett's a possibility. We love her. Um, Vaughn and Kenny. That's interesting. Listen, come on now with John Brandon. Um, I'd love to have John Brandon on the show. Um, I've had a hard time getting through to him. Um, I need to try to go through a different uh, avenue. But John Brandon, you know. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Dina Cancer, you think? Is, it, is this my girlfriend under a fake name? Yeah. Uh, uh, Rick Agnew is the other one, right? Yeah. Rick Agnew would be great. We had the Gallo. We, we did a show. We did a show with the Gallo brothers. Um, Marky Ramone's a good one. Um, I, I reached out to CJ Ramone. Those guys are like not really much on social media. It's kind of hard to get through them. Um, but Marky would be good. Um, uh, Tim from Avail. Good one, BMX. Yep. Yep. Write that down. Tim from Avail. Um, Tim Barry. Yeah. Um, well, we have, we have Peter Leeds coming up on the show. This is a big one. I mean, Peter Leeds managed Blondie in the heyday. And, of course, there's going to be a lot of Blondie talk on this show here. He managed them in their heyday, parallel lines and all that. And there's talk about, I think, I think I'd like to get Clem Burke on the show. I'm a big fan of his. So Clem Burke probably, you know, you know, after that. Um, Jello, of course. What's up, Al? Um, of course, you know, Jello would, Jello would be, Jello's like someone I've been thinking about. We got a hundred, the 200th show and like, what are we going to do for the 200th show? And it's like, I'm, ten, I'm thinking maybe I should reach out to my friend, John Lydon, Henry Rollins, maybe Ian Jello, Ray Capo. Like we got to go big on, on 200, right? Um, listen, I, I listen, Mr. Columbia with, with Robo Robo's Colombian, right? Um, I have no idea where, I, where Robo is. I've tried to get Phil and Samo on the show. It didn't. Yeah. You know, he's, you know, you don't, you got to wait, I, you know, Civarelli, I just, I just, I got, I'm sending him a book tomorrow and I'll follow up. I'd like to get him on. Um, Steve Jones would never do this show. Never in a million years. Mike Ness. Yeah, I wish. Mike, do you ever see Mike Ness do a show like this? It ain't happening. John Zos has been on the show a couple times, Vicky. And he's welcome back anytime. Um, yeah. I, I I sort of thought that yeah that he's not in Newark he's back in Columbia right listen we'll get, we'll get Henry one eventually we're gonna make our way to everybody everyone on the planet Earth you know Ernie I've reached out to yeah he, he has no interest in doing it um, Lombardo come on now I'm gonna put him on the list Dave Lombardo you know who you know who just crossed my went across my radar screen. You know uh, the kid that plays in Suicidal, the young kid Brandon that played in in um, with Doyle. He played in Suicidal. What's his name? Brandon. Brandon. 
Just thinking of reaching out to him, Paul Simonon. You think? Uh, yeah, I reached out to Dave. I didn't hear back from him. Um, what's the kid's name? Brandon what? Um, um, he played in Suicidal and is he in Slipknot now? No. What am I thinking of? Somebody help me here. Um, not Brandon Cruz. Al, stop it. But although Brandon Cruz would be cool, right? Brandon Cruz doesn't want to talk about the courtship of Eddie's father or anything like that. So I don't know. Um, you know, that thank you. That's it. Brandon P P Petzerburn. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Incredible drummer, young kid, killing it. Killing it. It it. Um Tim Rancid, of course, but you know, you know, that's a possibility. Yeah, there it is. We'll talk about Bill Bixby. Merle Allen. I have no contact with, with like, like when, like, if Al Baril, Al Baril, if you're still watching, when I was in Boston, that whole Gigi Allen thing was. I wanted nothing to do with it. It was, I, th we just, I wasn't interested in, it. I didn't think it was any form of entertainment whatsoever. I, so the Gigi Allen thing, I always stayed away from, you know, he would just like anybody who was like throwing duty on people and, and all like it was, it didn't resonate for me. And, and a lot of people I remember in the Boston hardcore scene were not into the Gigi Allen thing, you know? Um, so, and I can't say I even appreciate anybody who's like smearing human feces on themselves. Yeah. We don't want, yeah. Right. Al, you remember we were not into that, man. That was not on our radar screen that GG Allen, like throwing duty at people like, e -e -e. you know, duty, duty, duty goes in the toilet bowl and then it gets flushed unless you're a dog. Your human picks it up and puts it in the trash can. Yeah, I'm not down with all that, man. Like duty, you know, duty's not entertaining to me. <laughs> feces, feces flingers. <laughs> you ever see? You ever see that? <laughs> no shit, sure. Like you ever see that footage of him? I think it's from the the, the like the last show he played at the gas station in New York. He like he has duty like smeared all over himself. And he's like, ah, he comes at people and everyone runs out of the room. And then they all kind of, eventually they sort of dribble back in. And he's like, ah, you know, there you go. Um, Kev won bulldoze. That's a possibility. He's just not, he's not playing music these days that I know of. It's, it's hard to bring people on when they haven't done anything musically in 10 or more years. You know, you you know, you want to bring people on that can talk about what they're doing now and stuff, you know, scat core. That's what they call deer, deer poop, right? Scat or, or like scat is a term for uh, bear scat, right? Um, I tried to get DMC on the show. We don't understand what happened. We talk, we're talking to his manager. I don't know. We, we don't understand DMC. DMC ghosted us. So, you know, Rick Healy. Hey, Rick Healy, you know. Rick Healy ain't coming on the show. Um, you know, we don't need to, we don't, we don't need those problems either, man. We don't want to bring people on the show that suffer from mental illness. Not a good idea, you know. Listen, Waddy. Waddy's come up a lot of times. You know what, Sid? I got to get Sid on, on the Wadi case. Um, the thing about Wadi is we just no one's going to understand what he's saying. Wadi's hard to understand if you've ever tried to have a conversation with him. Beastie Boys aren't interested in talking about hardcore, man. That's like they don't want to talk about hardcore. They, aban they abandoned us a long time ago. Um, Rick Rubin, you think? Dude, man, I'd love to talk to Rick Rubin. I'd really love to talk to Rick Rubin. Yeah, Charlie Harper would be good, Al, for sure. You know, Zach. 
Yeah, sure. Get Zach. Get, yeah. You know? Um, is that right? Wadi was on was on Steve's show? Is that right? I didn't know that. You know? Butch Vig. Sure. You know, Russell Simmons ain't doing a show. Ain't doing a show. Is that right? Does Sleazy P have a show? You know, it's a, co you know, we bring him on. It's a, it's a comedy show. Like, what do we get? Sleazy P, you know. You want comedy, watch his show, you know. Um, oh, someone just bought a book. Who just bought a book? Richard Pejesha, Pejesha in Mesquite. Mesquite what, dude? You didn't, dude, you're nuts. Mesquite, what's Mesquite? 75150. You didn't put what state you're in, dude. I think Mesquite is what, Texas? Someone look that up. Mesquite, the uh, area code is 75150. Guy bought a book, didn't even put it. Listen, we love Duff. I'd love to get Duff on the show. Duff was in the farts back in the day. We'd love to get, yeah. Steve would be good. Yeah, for sure, Lou. Um, who's the vocalist for Overkill? Bobby's the vocalist from Overkill. What are you talking about, Hags? Um, Spermicide from Crucial Chaos? I don't know, man. Bill Stevenson, we reached out to. He, he didn't. He didn't respond. Uh, Dave Grohl, sure. Bobby Blitz. Well, we just, we just, we just had, um, we had a, um, a Bittner on. Bobby Blitz would be cool. We could do that. You know, elimination sounds like, you know, how about, you know, we, we, we announced this before, but how about this? All you, all you people suggesting the metal stuff out there, we got Doro coming on the show. My home girl, Doro Pesh is coming on the show. So there you go. Come on now. How cool is this going to be? Look at the joy in her face. How cool is this show going to be? Right? We love Doro. Ray Capo, I Ray Capo's on is 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 on the on deck circle. We got to bring Ray on for something really special. You know, we got to bring Ray on for like the two hundredth show or something. I, I just can't, we gotta, you know, you know. Uh, we haven't had any killing time guys on. I've reached I've reached out uh, to Anthony, but I don't think he, Anthony wouldn't do a show like this. I don't I don't think he's interested. Yes, Gina, the Luna chicks. Yeah, I get. We should probably do that. I should probably do a couple of Luna chicks, you know. Thought I thought about Jordan Cooper. There you go. Well, anyway, what do you say we end this show on the three-hour mark? All right. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, it was a great show. I uh, wish you all the best. Uh, here come the holidays. We'll see you one more show before the holidays. Until then, do good things, and good things will come to you.